Chapter 841, The Old Headmaster's Past Chen Gook pitted in Bai, but if she refused to talk, there was nothing Chen Gook could do. I'm a new student who just transferred here. I don't know the school that well. I hope you won't be offended if I've said something unkind. The girl was in an unstable state. Forcing questions on her might cause her mental state to collapse. Chen Gu remembered her bed number, he planned to return as he pulled the curtain. Back. The thick white curtain closed, segregating the bed from the outside world. Chen Gu walked to the next bed, but before he took a step, he felt a sudden tug on the corner of his shirt. Turning back to look, a pale hand had reached out from under the white curtain to pull on his shirt. Run away, do not attend school here, you'll go mad. In Bai's voice was low, and Chen Gu had to focus to listen. I feel like the atmosphere here is not bad. Everyone wants to be my friend. Chen Gu did not think that the girl would harm him. He was just afraid that she would refuse to communicate. As long as she was willing, everything could be discussed. Go back to your old school, please. There was pleading in her voice. She did not give a specific reason, but Chen Gu could hear from her tone that she was really concerned about him and did not want him to be hurt. In the world behind the door, there was such a kind girl, Chen Gu thought that this was rather surreal. I can't return. Chen Gu paused. And his brain came up with the explanation in zero point something seconds. I was bullied at my old school. I have no idea what I did wrong but those people bullied me every day like it was something fun for them. My parents found the disciplined teacher to talk about this, but after they did that, the bullying only got worse. In the end, no one in class was willing to be my friend. I couldn't stay there any longer, so I transferred here. You were bullied at your old school, so you transferred here? The white curtain was pulled back a gap to reveal Ian Bai's palm-sized face. The terror in her eyes had dissipated somewhat, and in its place, was shock and worry. I don't know how to tell you this, but if you do not wish to get hurt again, I advise you to move to another school. Perhaps this was sympathy between fellow bully victims. Chen Gu felt closer to In Bai. Why? This is my first day here. Half an hour ago, I just introduced myself to my new classmates. It feels wrong to leave now. Chen Gu was fishing for the truth. He needed more information to provide real help to change the school. This school is like a dark whirlpool, you have to leave before you're sucked in. Once you're trapped, you can't escape. You'll be pulled into the depths of hell. Either you're crushed, or you'll join the monster's ranks. The girl sat in bed. She refused to gain contact with outside world. It appeared to be her limit to reach her hand outside the curtain. Is it that scary here? The world was a stark contrast to the school created by the painter. At that moment, Chen Gu believed that he had gained some understanding of Chang Wenyu and the painter. One accepted beauty and hope and tore away humanity, the other chose to escape to a place where they would no longer be hurt. Their methods to gain the school's approval were interesting. It could not be said that they were wrong, but they never really tackled the root of the problem. You will be assimilated. If you don't want to be bullied, in the end, the only way is to turn into a monster. Inbai probably had not conversed with others for a long time. Seeing the kindness in Chen Gu and how he was a new student, she chose to talk to him. There are only two choices? Then you. Chen Gu put down his bags and sat next to the bed. The bed was like the girl's, closed inner world. Chen Gu slowly entered it with a bit of kindness. Can you tell me your story? The girl did not answer, but she did not chase Chen Gu away or act agitated. She probably hoped deep inside that someone would be by her side, but for various reasons, she had lost the courage to communicate with others. Her world was enveloped by evil intent. Once she took a step, she would fall into the trap filled with venomous snakes and knives. Looking at the girl closely, Chinga noticed that she was quite cute and had a sickly beauty about her. She would arouse others' intention to destroy. The slender arms, white neck, bloodless skin, and face. The child hugged her knees, 
and black hair covered her eyes like she was spacing out. The bed was soft, and Chingun noticed that there was a deep impression on the girl's pillow like there was something hidden inside it. Moving his eyes about, Chingu found a picture frame by her pillow. It was a family photo. A slightly large old man was pushing a wheelchair. A young woman in the chair was holding a bouquet of flowers weakly. There were needle marks on the backs of her hands. There were two cute girls next to the wheelchair. They wore pretty dresses and leaned on their mother from each side. The two girls were In Hong and In Bai, but the real person that captured Chin Ji's attention in the picture was the old man who was pushing the wheelchair. The man had salt and pepper hair, and he looked just like someone from Chin Ji's memory. His face and the way he laughs looked 90% similar to the old headmaster from Muyang High School. Chen Gu had seen the old headmaster's picture in his office when he had it taken with the rest of the students. A rotund, smiling old man sat in the middle. But the age doesn't match. Why would the old headmaster be with these two girls? With a dry cough, Chen Gu softly asked, Ying Bai, is the old man in the picture your grandfather? Yes. Ying Bai nodded. He's my only family. He occasionally comes to see me. He comes to see you? Your only family? Ying Bai's answer contained a whole lot of information, and various thoughts filled up Chin Ji's mind. If the old man was really Mu Yang High School's old headmaster, and Ying Bai said he occasionally came to visit her, it meant that the old headmaster knew about the route to enter and lead the school of the afterlife. Furthermore, Ying Bai and Ying Hong were both in the picture, but Ying Bai said that the old man was her only family. This meant that from In Bai's perspective, In Hong was not family. Something bad must have happened between the girls. In Bai, can you tell me more about your grandfather? Chen Gun nudged toward her. In Bai who sat in bed lifted her head and said after a long pause, My grandfather is infertile. He has no biological children, but he has many children. Chapter 842 I will be that light My mother was one of the children adopted by him. Ying Bai's eyes were very pretty and clear. My mother was an abandoned baby, and she was weak from a young age. Her condition only got better when she was adopted by my grandfather. She was brought up by him and stayed by his side until she was twenty and met my father. They had a simple wedding, and soon, I arrived. After she gave birth to me, my mother's physical condition deteriorated, and my father's attitude toward her also slowly changed. Then father's company closed, and he was left with plenty of debt. He was chased by moneylenders and had to leave me and my mother so that he could avoid them. He always told us that the lenders would not trouble a woman and a newborn and only dared to sneak home every few days at midnight. This continued for a few months until father stopped communicating with us and never returned home. Caring for a child while being threatened through the closed door, the home being splashed with paint, mother finally collapsed. The doctor called grandfather, and it was only then that he knew how bad the situation was. It was not common at the hospital for the older generation to take care of the younger generation. Mother got worse. Her last wish was to see father one last time. It was not for love, but she wanted to give him a slap and ask him a question. Her wish became her dying wish. The day that she died, it appeared like grandfather grew older before my eyes. Then I started living with grandfather, going to school, studying. As she lowered her head, Inbai said, it was not my intention to cause trouble for him. I didn't mean it. For Inbai's story, the old headmaster of Muyang High School was a kind person. Evil and desire were not seen in him at all, this strengthened Chen Ji's need to meet the man. Your grandfather is a good person. Do you know where he is now? I wish to meet him. If he knew how to leave the school of the afterlife, then Chen Gu would have nothing to lose. Ying Bai shook her head. He lives outside the school, but he always shows up when I'm at the edge of my rope, and whenever I see him, I'll feel much better. Understood. Chen Gu did not press. Chaos was coming to the school the old headmaster would come to protect his granddaughter, so all he needed to do was wait. 
you'd better get a good rest. I won't disturb you anymore. Closing the curtain, Chen Gu was thinking about the old headmaster. The latter had avoided him several times already, but that should stop soon. Leaving Yin Bai's bed, Chen Gu suddenly realized something. When the girl was talking about her past, there was no mention of Yin Hong at all. It was as if this person did not exist in her life. Yin Hong is in the family portrait, so why did the child purposely leave her out? What happened to this pair of sisters? Chinga felt like what had happened to Yin Bai probably had something to do with Yin Hong. Once the old headmaster is found, everything will be solved. I'll forget about it for now. Remembering Yin Bai's bed, Chinga even thought about taking Yin Bai with him so that he could guard her personally. But considering that the doctor might not approve of that, he gave up that thought. He continued to do his round. When Chen Gu passed the last bed, a heavy stench of medicine came from inside. Pulling open the white curtain, Chen Gu looked at the bed, there was a normal-looking boy lying in it. All his limbs were bandaged, and his eyes were hollow as he stared at the ceiling. Even when the curtain was pulled back, he did not react. The child seemed to be isolated from the outside world, he was a veritable zombie. Yen Fei? Chen Gu was unsettled, seeing the boy in this state. The child was like a normal person, he was a caricature of the public. I know that you're not feeling well, and I'm not here to tell you to get over it. I'm just here to tell you that I've helped you get revenge. I taught the bullies a lesson. After school, I will teach them a much deeper lesson. He used different method to converse with different people. To get close to Yan Fei, this was the tactic employed by Chen Gu. When he said that, Yan Fei still showed no reaction. It was as if the boy was no longer interested in anything. Chen Gu tried to say something else, but no matter what, Yan Fei did not respond. His body did not even budge. Unable to communicate, the mission given by Chang Wenyu was harder than he had thought. Standing next to the bed, Chen Gu was about to reach his hand through the bed to check what the real problem with Yan Fei's body was when the door not far away was opened. The doctor had come out. With limited time, Chen Gu pulled his hand back and looked at Yan Fei with some regret. Darkness is there. Even if you ignore it, it will not disappear. If you do not wish to be consumed by darkness, turn yourself into light and shine on all the darkness. I know that you can hear me, and I know that you once resisted. Now I am taking your former seat. I will help you complete the things that you are unable to do. An eye for an eye, after I've punished those that need it, I will return. Yan Fei's situation was more serious than Chen Gu had expected. He had completely isolated himself. He refused to speak to communicate. Perhaps only with a knife on his neck would he realize that he was still alive. You are not wrong, and I'll prove it to you. Chen Gu wanted to change the school, and for that, he needed to change the student's perspective first. When encountering school bullying, silence was not going to solve anything. Only by stepping forward could one protect oneself and others. If all the students could do that, school bullying would be stopped before it had a chance to grow. Chen Gu did not think that all the students would be like him. He merely wished to set an example. A man who dared stand up to violence at school. Walking out from the nurse's office, Chen Gu returned to class. The teacher glanced at him but said nothing. When the school bell rang to signify that school was over, the teacher was the first to leave like he had something important to do. After the teacher left, the few students from the last row rushed out. They pointed at Chen Gu like they were planning something. Out of kindness, Li Bing took a big risk to pass a note to Chen Gu. Do not go home alone today. Tell your parents to come fetch you. If my parents really come here, they will level this place, but unfortunately, I haven't seen them for a long time. Chen Gu sat at his table and slowly put the textbooks away. I'm not kidding you. There are too many of them. You have broken the game rule, so they will all gang up on you. Li Bing was nervous, he could have seen Chen Ji's bad ending. Don't worry, I might have more people with me. Chen Gu put the last textbook into his bag and strode out from the classroom. 
Chapter 843, Changing Smile Chen Gu was there to create trouble, so the more chaotic the school of the afterlife, the happier he would be. I have my student ID in the left pocket and teacher's ID in my right. With all the preparation done, I'm ready to rearrange the structure at this school. Pressing the start button on the recorder, Chen Gu held his two bags and reached the end of the corridor. As if worried about him, Li Bing followed Chen Gu after he left. He hesitated, like he wanted to tell Chen Gu something, but was afraid of being seen by the bullies. Chen Gu strode down the corridor. He did not know his way about and was just wandering about. The number of students in the corridor decreased, the remaining ones appeared to know him. They averted their eyes from him and pointed behind him like they were planning something. Why haven't they made their move? I've already reached some real secluded parts of the school. Chen Gu tried his best to cooperate with the bullies. The darker the corridor, the better it was. To lure the bullies to attack him, he was controlling his expression to make himself appear to be confident on the outside but actually shaking like a leaf inside. At that moment, the bullies were perhaps enjoying the thrill of the hunt, playing the game of cat and mouse. The few buildings at the school seemed to be connected. The office and the teacher's dormitory are the eastern part of the school, and in contrast, the western part is the part with the least amount of management. It is filled with empty labs and storerooms. It's rarely visited by teachers and students. Chen Gu looked more agitated, and he wandered around the school like a headless chicken. Finally, he accidentally entered the most secluded storage area in the school of the afterlife. When he walked into the corridor of the western side of the school, Li Bing left. In the end, he did not have the courage to tell Chen Gu. There was no one else in the corridor. The thin blood fog surrounded Chen Gu. It's time for them to make their move, right? I've already voluntarily walked to such an isolated place. Listening to the static from the recorder, Chen Gu looked out the window. Blood fog enveloped the whole world. Through the fog, one could catch a blurry glimpse of a blood-red sun. The thing appeared to be entirely made up of negative emotion. I've not seen this thing in other places behind the door before. The sun blinked in and out of the fog. This scene loosened Chen Ji's memory, and it reminded him of something that had happened a long time ago. When he was doing the tunnel nightmare mission, Chen Gu had once entered a hallucination and seen the self that was killed many years ago inside the tunnel. He had been unable to shake loose, and it was Zhang Ye who had reached out to save him. When he saw the death illusion, Zhang Ye's appearance had been like a blood-red sun. It's too similar. It's just like how I saw Zhang Ye when I was lost. Could the sun here be represented by a specter as well? Sudden footsteps interrupted Chen Ji's thought. He turned back to look and realized that the doors that were on the two sides of the corridor were all opened, and the fog around him thickened. The footsteps came closer, and the air became more suffocating. There was the sound of metal hitting the ground. It's understandable that the new student did not know the rules, but openly breaking the rules and not respecting us, that needs some serious education. One of the room doors was pushed open, and a muscular man walked out. Three students followed behind him. They were all students from Chen Ji's class, and they sat on the back row. Just four of you? Chen Gu was not satisfied. He had made such a large ruckus, but only four had taken the bait. Don't worry, we're all students here, so we won't punish you too much. The leading and largest student blocked the corridor with a smile. He scanned Chen Gu up and down like he was studying him. You dare touch me at the school? Chen Gu warned the man darkly, but the students did not seem to mind. You'd better turn back to look you. There are no cameras here. Normally, no one comes here. Even if they do, they will not tell on us. The few students had probably done this more than once already, and they were fearless. Turn back? Chen Gu turned behind him, and the storeroom door that was not far away was pushed open. A stench drifted out from it. This smell is very familiar. I smelled it in the painter's reconstructed school before. It's released by those inverted monsters. 
The stench thickened, and the students from Chen Ji's class moved backward to block the only exit on the other side. If Chen Gu wished to escape, he could only run deeper into the corridor. You can only blame yourself for having run into our territory. Even the teachers don't dare come here often. A middle-aged man walked out from the storeroom. He was wearing a bloody shirt, and his face appeared to have been seared by a fire brand as a scary-looking scar was left there. Brother Ba, this is the kid. He hit my friend on his first day of school. How did he hit him? The middle-aged man dragged out a new wooden chair from the storeroom. He did not even pay any attention to Chen Gu. He used a chair to hit my friend's head. That's quite ruthless. The middle-aged man held his chin. Let me think about this. Even though he doesn't follow the rules, after all, he's new here. How about this? Come over here and take this chair. Then, hit him back like how he hit your friend. Each of you will get to hit him once. If he dares resist, I will call my people. Go ahead. We'll do it? That's not that good, right? Stop wasting time. While the middle-aged man was communicating with the students, Chen Gu was observing him. The man was not a student there, he was probably a wandering spirit who had been dragged into the school when the school was expanding, and listening to his words, there appeared to be more people like him. Consuming the students at the school might earn the school's ire, but these outsiders should not be under the school's protection. If my workers consume them, the school might even appreciate my effort to clean this place out. The way Chen Go looked at the middle-aged man changed. He prepared to teach a lesson to all the bullies until they surrendered, but now the plan had changed. What is all this noise? If they don't dare to, we'll do it. How troublesome is that? More people walked out from inside the storeroom. They were dressed differently from the students. Each of them had a scar on their bodies and had retained the look during their death. The fight would soon be over. Brother Ba dragged the chair to walk toward Chin Go. He looked at Chin Ji's legs, which were shivering, and the scar on his face contorted. Now you know how to be afraid? No, I'm just curious. Why would all of you listen to those students' orders? Is it because one of them has something on you, and you are forced to cooperate with them? Chinga had a few guesses in mind. Chapter 844, The Counterattack It was clear that the middle-aged man did not intend to answer Chen Gu. From his perspective, Chen Gu was just a new student who did not know his place. You sure have plenty to say. Raising the chair to aim at Chen Ji's shoulder, the middle-aged man did not want to leave any obvious wound on Chen Gu. They were experienced in beating people up without leaving conspicuous wounds. Bang! The chair landed on the wall. Chen Gu had avoided it. You dare to resist? The scar on the man's face started to twist, and his partners walked toward him. Before I came here, I told the teachers. They will be here soon. No one believed Chen Gu. His body was shaking, and his eyes were darting about. All those details told them that he was afraid and lying. Can you even hear yourself? Who would believe that? The middle-aged man grabbed another chair and threw it at Chen Gu. Chen Gu wiggled backward, saw the opening, and ran deeper into the storeroom. The deeper he went, the more deserted it was. No one expected Chen Gu to run that way, so they were stunned briefly. When they realized what had happened, Chen Gu was already several meters away. Looks like the boy is so scared that he can't even tell the direction. The middle-aged man shared a look with others that came out from the storeroom, there were blood vessels in their eyes. Go after him. Don't let him get away. The students from Chin Ji's class did not quite get it. They still wished to teach Chin Gu a lesson. The spirits from outside the school did not make their move immediately. They seemed to wish for Chen Gu to run further. Don't worry, he's not going to escape. An old man at the edge of the crowd licked his lips and swallowed the saliva. He pointed his finger at the rest. I want a piece. The rest of you can share. Old fart, half a piece is enough to choke you. 
The middle-aged man tossed the wooden chair before the students. You people guard this exit. The deeper part of the corridor is very dangerous. We also don't know how many outsiders are hiding there. Seeing Chen Go almost disappearing from their eyes, the spirits from outside the school finally started to give chase. They purposely maintained a distance from Chen Go, wishing for him to run deeper. This would make their next move more convenient, and that was exactly what Chen Gu was hoping for. Both parties formed a strange union, one was running, the other chasing. They fled through two corridors, and it was Chen Gu who finally stopped. He acted like he was winded and turned to hide inside an old toilet at the end of the corridor. The door to the school of the afterlife was pushed open in a toilet, and now I've been forced to hide inside the toilet again. Is this a coincidence, or has everything been planned? The door pusher was injured inside the last cubicle, so Chingo also hid inside the last cubicle. The corridor was permeated with blood fog. There was no one in the abandoned school, only his own heartbeat and breathing were his company. Creak. The door was pushed open, and footsteps echoed in his ears. The other party's shoes sounded like they were stepping on blood, there was a squishy sound to it. Did that child experience this before? History repeated itself, but this time, the victim was Chin Gu. Are you here? A scratchy male voice came from the toilet entrance. The spirits were toying with Chin Gu. Creak. The door of the first cubicle was slowly pushed open, and the footsteps neared. Chin Gu took a deep breath as the images that he had seen on the top floor of the education block in the toilet appeared in his mind. He was experiencing the same thing that was experienced by the child before he died. Fear, anxiety, increased heartbeat. He held his mouth with his hands to make sure that he made no noise. His back against the wall, his strength was gradually slipping as he curled at the corner of the dirty toilet. The slender body kept shivering. His brain was filled with the fear of what they would do to him after he was captured. Many negative emotions tortured his brain and soul. How would one expect a young child to stand up to all that? Being in their shoes, Chinga felt like he had gained a better understanding of those children. The way an adult looked at the world was different from a child. The fear in a child's eyes was different from that of an adult. Rubbing his chilled palms together, Chinga stopped his wandering mind. Are you in here? The door of the second cubicle was pushed open. They sounded very strange, like a soul that would not leave, a shadow that was stubborn. I saw you. I know you're hiding here. The door of the third cubicle creaked open, and the blood fog thickened. The toilet became more suffocating. The light stench of blood instigated everyone. Their eyes were filled with blood, and many feral faces squeezed into the toilet. We are coming to get you. Blood leaked out from their wounds. The middle-aged man held the rope that he had found in the storeroom. His finger scratched the door of the cubicle. He knocked on it lightly with a graceful touch, he was enjoying this. He's not inside the fourth cubicle. Looks like he's in the last one. The nail scratched on the wooden door, creating a spine-tingling sound. The footstep stopped before the last cubicle. Are you in here? The door wiggled, and the anxious heart jumped. The bullies were ready, the ending had been decided. It's locked? I know you're in there. Come out. Come out. The door was shivering under the heavy, regular knocks. Just how helpless the child would have been, he would have had to face those people alone and suffer the consequence. Come out, come out wherever you are. The sound outside grew louder. The sound of footsteps, screaming, and knocking were mixed into a cacophony that could push one over the edge. Bang! The old lock could not suffer so much banging, and the cubicle door was finally pushed open. The middle-aged man who stood at the front held the rope and squeezed in before the door fully opened. Pull him out! Pull him out, the people behind shouted, but there was no reply from the middle-aged man like he had disappeared. Creak! The door whose lock was broken slowly open. The sound of dripping echoed in everyone's ears. Fresh blood leaked out from under the door. 
the heavy stench of blood rushed at them. There were many people squeezed inside the small cubicle. You all wish to bully, but I intend to kill, our goals were different from the beginning. Chinguk closed the comic and leaned against the wall. His palm was toying with a stain that looked like a wilted heart. After consuming all of you, Bai Chilin should be able to evolve into a red specter. Chapter 845 Blood Sky The victims ran away in a hurry before hiding inside the last cubicle of the toilet. The bullies closed in on them step by step, inching toward their prey with smiles on their faces, pulling the rope around the victim's neck tighter and tighter. This image appeared in the mind of the old man who guarded outside the toilet, but as he anxiously turned to look inside the toilet, he realized that everything was different from his expectation. A bloody man with just one hand held the leader by his neck as he slammed the leader against the wall. Various blood vessels curled around the leader's legs. He tried to struggle to escape, his hands leaving scratches on the white wall, but no matter how hard he struggled, he was unable to break free. The horrible stench permeated the toilet. An impossibly large fat man squeezed out from the cubicle. He was more passionate than the other workers, the stench that drifted out from the bullies excited him greatly. More and more shadows walked out from inside the cubicle, and that stunned the old man. He was frozen where he was. Before he realized what had happened, five pale fingers gripped his neck. His breathing was stunted. He wished to see who his aggressor was, but this simplest wish failed to turn into reality. Is it painful? Before dispersing, this was the only question that the old man heard. In less than thirty seconds, silence returned to the toilet. Chen Gu walked out from the cubicle and scanned his employees. Bai Chilin had consumed Xiong Qing's heart, and after such a feast, he was one step away from becoming a red specter. By now, he had mastered some of Xiong Qing's unique skill. The red specter, created by the ghost stories society had only had half his body, the other half had been constructed completely from negative emotions and blood vessels. During the fight earlier, Chen Gu had noticed that Bai Chilin also used blood vessel to weave his broken arm. Bai Chilin was slowly growing stronger, but he was not the one who had the biggest change. That would be the boy with the stench whom he had brought from Western Zhejiang Private Academy. This boy who had stayed with his father's cadaver for a long time had gotten used to the odorous stench. He had no name, everyone hated him, and the stench was his nickname. To Chin Ji's surprise, in the school of the afterlife, this specter that was not even a half-red specter found a way to make himself stronger. He sucked away the stench from the wandering spirit to make himself larger and scarier. What is the stench around these spirits? How come I smelled the same stench in the painter's reconstructed school? Chin Gu did not think much of the stench initially, but the boy's reaction caused Chin Gu to pay it more attention. If there's a chance, perhaps I should take him to the trash collection center between the schools. The recyclable might come in handy. After his workers had cleaned up the toilet and washed away the evidence, Chin Gu pulled all the workers back into the comic and walked out from the toilet. Initially, I thought that my haunted house was close to becoming a four-star scenario, but reality proves that I was wrong. Chin Gu walked to the window by the corridor. It felt as if the red sun was looking at him. The school of the afterlife is filled with many lingering spirits and contains thirteen scary specters who have the qualification to become door pushers. There's an unknown number of red specters, but the safest speculation puts the number at thirteen at the very least. That, combined with the consciousness of the school itself, made this four-star scenario to be very scary. Thankfully, the school is not hostile against me and hasn't tried to come after me. But even if I am able to leave the school alive, what about the ghost fetus scenario? That whole entire four-star scenario is specifically made to kill me. A four-star scenario was completely different from a three-star scenario. Chinga felt like even if he did not try to go and accept that mission, the mission would find him. What will be will be. All I can do now is grow stronger in this school and then wait for the ghost fetus arrival. Walking amid red specters and ghosts to increase his strength in the face of death, only Chin could dare do something like that, but he had no choice. 
he had been pushing himself forward. When he turned around, he realized that there was already no way back. Standing at the entrance, Chin Good did not deactivate the recorder but carried his two bags and headed deeper into the storeroom. Since I'm already here, I can't waste my time. Furthermore, the school is a place to learn, but the atmosphere has been ruined by these people. That's atrocious. Chin Good did not understand why the school would allow these spirits to exist. Perhaps it did not think that it was worth the effort to deal with them. If it's too inconvenient for you, I'll help you do it. He had no idea what the benefit was from gaining the school's approval, but that was one of the steps of his plan. Walking into the storerooms, Chin Gu sent out all his employees, but the spirits seemed to have sensed that something had gone wrong, and they had all disappeared. Something's not right. The blood in the air thickened, and the blood fog outside the window rolled anxiously. The sun that was shining on the school seemed to be expanding, like it was descending upon the place. It should be, because of me. Looks like the painter and Chong Wenyu are officially at it. I can't stay here any longer. I need to gather all the students who have the potential to be the door pushers around me. That is the only way I might survive. Chen Ji's real trump card was Zhang Ya. Perhaps Chang Wenyu saw that and pulled Chen Gu into the school of the afterlife, but she had no idea how strong Zhang Ya really was. Summoning his employees back, Chen Gu retraced his steps. He needed to get in Bai and Yan Fei to side with him before the chaos arrived. The old headmaster of Muyang High School is worried about in Bai's safety and will probably take her to somewhere safe before the anarchy starts. That will be my chance. With that in mind, Chinga ran faster. He walked out the corridor, and the students from his class were still blocking the way. You are still alive? The few students looked at Chinga strangely. Almost forgot about you. Chinga flipped through the comic and had all by capture the students. Chinga planned to do unto them as they had planned to do unto him earlier. Slow down, I need to keep some evidence. Chen Gu took out Lin Cici's phone. This phone was used to capture the bullied's painful memories, but from now on, it's going to record something else. A group of people bullying one person, be it verbal abuse or physical abuse, that was bullying, but in contrast, a person chasing after a group of people, that was not bullying. At least from Chen Ji's perspective, he was helping the school clean up the streets. Chapter 846 Third Path Chen Gu saved the video of how he punished the bullies on Lin Cici's phone, he was not afraid of leaving behind evidence. He wished for everyone to know that there was someone at this school who dared to stand up to school bullying. For that, the video had to be convincing. Chen Gu chose a good angle for the shoot. He did not include his own employees in the video, only himself and the bullies. Those who did not know the truth might think Chin Good dealt with the numerous bullies alone just from viewing the video. After the video was completed, all the bullies crumpled to the ground. The way they looked at Chin Gu was filled with terror. This time, you have all been taught a lesson, right? Chin Gu stopped interacting with the bullies. He put down the bags and lay down on the ground to cover his body with the dust. Then he tore parts of his shirt and pants out before finally doping his body with blood. One has to look heroic. The employees had already gotten used to his way of thinking. They pitted the bullies for having encountered their boss. Summoning the employees back, Chingo moved with one hand on the wall. He needed to return to the nurse's office. Before he got that far, as he was turning a corner, Chingo bumped into someone who was rushing his way. The bully's helper? No matter who the person was, after Chen Gu was bumped into, he staggered backward to introduce some distance between them. Chen Gu. It was a round face that entered Chen Ji's eyes. The person had an unassuming look with a little baby fat. His eyes were wide with worry. Li Bing? The boy was Chen Ji's deskmate. When Chen Gu was bullied earlier, he had maintained his silence to prevent himself from being target. Even if he communicated with Chen Gu, it was through paper notes. Why are you here? I. Seeing how ruffled Chen Gu was, with the torn clothes, the dusty outfit, and the blood on his body, he panicked. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? I have no time to talk. If you're not one of the bullies, then move away. The blood sun that was covering the school was changing, Chingu was in a hurry to get to the nurse's office. I'm here to help you. I've already told the teachers. Li Bing said with determination. The change in his attitude was out of Chin Ji's expectations. That is the only way I can help you. Please stop angering them, they are familiar with ruffians outside of school. There are many of them, and the students with good results are also on their side. If you continue to do this, you'll only hurt yourself. I'm thankful that you're willing to stand forth to help me. But in certain matters, I will not compromise. Chen Gu leaned against the wall weakly. I am a rational person. What's wrong is wrong, and what's right is right. If it's wrong and I have to say that it's right because of social pressure, I can't do something like that. That's what I'm asking you to do. I'm just trying to teach you how to survive at this school. Li Bing advised. Chen Gu understood that his intentions were kind. I know you mean well but there has to be someone who dares to stand up to the bullies. Chen Gu wiped the blood off his collar, and his tone was harsh. Facing against the group of bullies and helping the bullied, everyone knows that is hard to do. Why should we sacrifice ourselves for others? But have you considered this? Just because everyone thinks like that, that is why those bullies dare to push so far into their madness. Chen Ji's voice was rising. I have faith that human nature is kind, and most people mean well. If the majority of people are kind, then why should we be bullied by those who are in the minority? Li Bing's lips fell open, he did not know what to say. Let me tell you the answer, kindness is easily mistaken as weakness. No one dares speak, no one dares stand up, so those be asterisk stars trample over everyone. Chen Gu grabbed Li Bing's hand and pressed it against his heart. The spot was wet with the blood of the gangsters. Kind people like us make up the majority. People just doesn't dare speak up. Thus, we need a person to lead by example. Li Bing finally understood Chen Ji's intention. So, you purposely provoke the bullies in class? No matter the time or place, bullying is wrong. They do not realize their mistake, and I will use my own method to remind them. Chen Gu reached out to grab Li Bing's shoulders. I cannot fall. I have to prove to everyone that the bullies are not impervious, there is no need for us to be afraid of them. Everyone can stand up on their own, criticize them bravely, and look down on their mistakes. If everyone had a consciousness like that, before the bullying even has a chance to occur, it would be stopped. To be honest, Li Bing had stopped listening a while back. He merely felt that Chen Gu was right, and the emotions caused his blood to boil. There are only four bullies in total. This time, you came forth to help me. If the other students were like you, just imagine how many would be on our side? Wouldn't our number be greater than the bullies? Li Bing nodded. Although he probably still would not dare come out to help Chen Gu before the bullies, at least his perspective had started to change. Come with me. We're going somewhere. Chen Gu wanted to take Li Bing to the nurse's office. A plan was forming in his mind. Where are we going? The teachers will be here soon, and those who tried to bully you. Before Li Bing finished, Chen Gu passed him Lin Cici's phone. This time, I won. If, one day, I fall down, I hope you will learn not to bow down to them. After finishing the video and looking at the dust and blood on Chen Ji's clothes, Li Bing's conviction was shaken. His despair was shattered, and hope bloomed in his heart. The two raced toward the nurse's office. There were no students in the corridors, but there were staff occasionally bustling about. Come in with me. Chen Go led Li Bing into the nurse's room. They headed right for Yen Fei's bed. In this bed lies Yen Fei. Li Bing felt guilty toward Yen Fei. He hesitated a long time before he pulled the white curtain aside. Seeing Yen Fei in bed, Li Bing apologized several times. What caught Chen Ji's attention was that Yen Fei, who would not respond to him, moved his fingers after seeing Li Bing, 
and his eyes slowly wandered to fall on Li Bing. They were once good friends. Chen Gu did not waste time on platitudes. He took out Lin Cici's phone, opened the video, and showed it to Li Bing. They will not be able to bully you again. Chen Gu repeated what he had told Li Bing. He hoped that Yan Fei would understand what he had done because this was the path that he had chosen, a path different from the painter and Chang Wenyu. Chapter 847, In Bai, In Hong to Yan Fei, Chen Gu was just an unknown stranger whom he did not know, but it was a different case with Li Bing, they had once been deskmates and friends. Yan Fei might not believe certain words that Chen Gu said, but it would take on a greater credibility when they came out of Li Bing's lips. Chen Gu knew that it would be immensely difficult to break down Yan Fei's mental defenses, so he had focused his attack on Yan Fei's close friend first. Li Bing told Yan Fei many things, and Yan Fei's eyes gradually took on a new shade. His heart and conviction had begun to shake, but Chen Gu had still not gained his full confidence. This school of the afterlife has already begun its change. I will transform this school right from its foundation. Chen Gu took Yan Fei's hand and pulled up his sleeves. The child resisted on instinct, he did not wish for his secret to be openly witnessed by others. The sleeves were hiding a bandage, and the bandage was hiding a slew of wounds. The wounds on your body will heal with medicine and rest, but the wounds that are torn on your heart will stay forever. I know you are using physical pain to try to numb the psychological pain, but that is no solution to any problem. Why are you using your own pain to punish yourself? Even if you die from the process, those who bullied you will not shed a single tear on your behalf. They will stand by your grave and continue to mock you while looking at your black and white photo. Folding back the shirt sleeves, Chen Go held Yan Fei's palm. Human warmth that he had not felt for a long time traveled from Chen Gu to Yan Fei. I know you still might not believe me, but I will use actions to prove myself. Chen Gu stood at the side of the bed. A giant change is coming to this school. It is far too dangerous for you to stay here alone, so why don't you come with me and Li Bing? We will protect you. That's right, Yan Fei. This time, I won't run away. I will stand by your side. Li Bing cooperated fully. He persuaded Yan Fei alongside Chen Gu, and Yan Fei's attitude began to shift. You, me, and Li Bing, we have many friends. None of us are willing to suffer the pain silently anymore. I will find them and have them join us. Chen Gu had rescued some students in the world inside the mirror and in this blood red world. Even though they had separated from Chen Gu, Chen Gu still treated them as partners and friends. There are other people on our side? Li Bing and Yan Fei turned to Chen Gu simultaneously. Yes, we are not alone. Chen Gu slowly picked up Yan Fei. Kind people are like light, and those who have kindness in their heart attract each other. Just wait and see, I will not disappoint you. It was about time for the school to adapt and change. Even though it had provided a home for these homeless children, the home was cold and unfeeling, it was not a suitable environment for them. It is time for the owner of the home to change. Chen Ge had Li Bing look after Yan Fei for the time being. He had not decided to leave the nurse's office just yet. He walked to Yin Bai's bedside. This child knew the old headmaster from Muyang High School, so Chen Gu would not leave her there. Peeling back the white curtain, Yin Bai sat at the edge of the bed with widened eyes. She had been eavesdropping on Chen Gu and the boy's conversation. I have not been listening to you guys. She was like a child who was caught with her hand in the cookie jar when her parents were not home. Her expression was cute with guilt. This formed a great contrast to the pain and despair that was predominant in the world behind the door. In Bai, there is something that I have to tell you. Chen Ge used his coup de grace. He took out the comic from his backpack. I know your grandfather, he is one of the people that I respect in the world. You know my grandpa? This time, it was In Bai's turn to be shocked. Her small lips opened and closed, and her eyes were swirling with surprise. Yes, I do not wish to lie to you anymore. 
The old man once operated a private children's home and provided a sanctuary to many orphans. Then, with the aid of the local government, he turned that organization into a school, and the school is named Muyang High School. I have personally been to that school before. These words that came out of Chen Ji's lips continued to shock the girl. Grandpa indeed operated a children's home before, but he was not involved in a school. Are you sure you've got the right person? Chen Ji's words had successfully attracted Ying Bai's curiosity. I am not mistaken. Since you know your grandfather has operated a children's home before, so you should recognize them. Chen Gu knew his persuasion would be successful. He walked out from the sick room. He flipped through the comic and summoned out several students from Muyang High School. In a few breaths' time, when Chen Gu returned to the room, there were several students trailing behind him. Their faces were carved with smiles and curiosity. Even though they only had their lingering spirits left, they looked like they were very blissful and happy. For these homeless orphans, achieving societal success was not part of their wish. They were a family, and their wish was simple, it was to stay together as a family. That was bliss enough. In Bai, I have been looking for you for a long time now. Chen Ji's tone was regretful. He stepped to the side. Only then did the students from Muyang High School finally see Yin Bai in bed, who was as thin as a stick. Her bones were practically protruding through her skin. The students were stumped, it was as if they could not believe their own eyes. You guys. Tears instantly fell from Yin Bai's eyes, and her voice was shaking. Long time no see. Chen Gu did not interrupt the reunion. He carried the backpack, walked out, and guarded the door. He found a corner that was rather isolated and took out a ballpoint pen that was covered in tape from his backpack. He dangled it above a piece of white paper and asked, Pen Spirit, can you tell me the story between that girl and your headmaster? You guys should be old friends, right? The pen stopped above the paper for a long time before it started to move. Thank you. That was out of Chen Ji's expectations, the pen spirit, who had a rather unapproachable personality and hard-to-please attitude, this time, put herself down to thank Chen Gu. Please don't act like that. I might think that you're possessed by another spirit. The pen spirit did not mind the mocking from Chen Gu, and she continued to write on the paper. A charity home and a private school are two wildly different concepts. Even though the old headmaster always had this idea in mind, it was incredibly hard to put into action. That was until the incident that happened to Li Xuein, then his intention to create a school for the orphans that he housed was made firm. Her name is Li Xuein? Isn't her name Yin Bai? I am not mistaken, she is Li Xuein. She is the child of the first child adopted by the old headmaster. Wait, that is a bit confusing. Can you please be more specific? Chen Gu held the pen and stared with extreme focus at the white paper. Li Xuane's mother was the first child taken in by the old headmaster. Because of her physical deformity, she was unable to do any work, and the old headmaster took care of her until the day she got married. Seeing the girl that he treated as his own walk down the aisle was incredibly touching for the old headmaster. He believed that his daughter had finally found happiness in life and could live a normal life, but who would have thought those horrible incidents would happen later? Li Xuane's mother's condition deteriorated. Her cold-blooded father made the decision to abandon the mother and daughter who were becoming more of a burden. In the end, it was the old headmaster who sent Li Xuane's mother away on her final journey at the hospital. Chen Ge nodded. I know about all that. You only need to tell me what happened to Yin Bai later. Li Xuane's mother's passing brought about a huge impact to the old headmaster. He was swallowed by guilt. He felt like it was his fault for failing to pick a good man for his daughter, and it was his own hands that pushed his daughter into the fire pit. The old headmaster adopted Li Xuane. He turned the heavy guilt that pressed down on him into love, and he put all his affection and attention into caring for Li Xuane. Xuane was a precocious child. She got excellent results at school. To ensure that she would have a bright future, 
the old headmaster sent her to the best school in the state, but something that no one could have expected happened. Halfway through the first semester, the news that Xu Wein had left the world came. It was only when it was all too late that the old headmaster knew that Xu Wein had been subjected to horrible bullying at her school. The people from her class envied Xu Wein because she always scored the best in class. Their envy slowly turned into hatred. In their mind, she was merely an adopted child, she had no father and no mother. During the parent-teacher conference, it was the staff from the children's home who came to attend on her parents' behalf. The old headmaster cherished Xu Wein dearly, so he had no idea that this kind of thing would even happen. The man who had been living for half a century collapsed, just like that. He pointed at those students who had on masks of innocence, yelling at them that they were murderers. This incident caused a lasting impact on the old headmaster. He adopted all these children because he wanted to give them happiness, not watch them walk step by step into a dark abyss. Death is irreversible. To ensure that the same thing would not happen to the rest of his children, to make sure that this kind of tragedy did not reoccur, he stopped at nothing to turn the children's home into Muyang High School. The pen in his grasp was still moving. Chinga really did not expect there to be such a detailed backstory to Muyang High School. When Muyang High School was completed, the old headmaster's hair was already all white. He was still so kind and generous, but it was as if a part of his soul was gone. He was not as talkative as before, and the smile on his face became smaller and smaller. If my memory serves me right, it was around that time that he often started to go out at night by himself. Wait a minute. When Chin Gu saw the last sentence that the pen spirit wrote, he felt that something was off. The old headmaster often went out at night on his own? If I'm not mistaken, he took the last bus to Western Zhejiang. The old headmaster was very busy in the day, and his only free time opened up at night. Do you know why he would travel so far to Western Zhejiang? I feel like it was because he had to go and meet up with someone, but one time, I saw the ticket for our haunted house on his office table. Even though the pen spirit did not admit it directly, she treated herself as part of the haunted house, and that was quite evident from her choice of words. The old headmaster came to Western Zhejiang's New Century Park's haunted house at midnight? Chen Ji's eyes widened. He was reminded of something else at that moment. When he entered Muyang High School the second time, he had seen a donation record inside the old headmaster's office, and it had contained both the names of Dr. Gao and his own parents. The old headmaster knew my parents. Chen Ji's eyes narrowed. He felt like it could have been his parents who acted as the old headmaster's guide, and that was the reason the old headmaster was able to reach him by in the school of the afterlife. I get it now, I understand everything now. Chen Gu took a deep breath. The old headmaster knew how dangerous the school of the afterlife was, and he was still worried about the students at Muyang High School, so he did not come to the decision to enter the school to rescue Ying Bai. Then, when I came to the school, he knew about my parents' personality, and he had confidence in me. On the surface, it looked like I had taken the students away from him, but in actuality, he wished for me to find a permanent home for them. After getting that all cleared up, Chin Gu did not get angry from being lied to. If anything, his admiration of the old headmaster only increased. Even after death, he still cared so greatly about these kids. After obtaining the black phone, Chin Gu had seen the other world. He had seen the deepest darkness and actual hope, like the old headmaster of Muyang High School and Dr. Wei, who donated his body to Zhejiang Medical University for the advancement of medical science. With nothing to lose, the old headmaster has entered the school of the afterlife to try to figure out a way to save Ying Bai. He should be in this school at the moment. After knowing that the old headmaster was familiar with his parents, Chen Ji's desperation to find the old headmaster increased. If he could meet him in person, many mysteries about himself would be resolved. The old headmaster passed the care of the students from Muyang High School to me. Looks like he is determined to even die. But why? We're all family. I wish he would have come to discuss things with me first. 
Chen Gu had understood the whole story. He was about to put the pen away when he saw suddenly reminded of something. Pen spirit, does Li Xiuan have any siblings? Other than Yin Bai, there is a girl called Yin Hong at this school. She looks almost identical to Yin Bai, but her personality is completely different. She appears to be more cunning and careful with her words. Li Xiuan does not have any siblings, her only family is the old headmaster, the pen spirit answered honestly on the white paper. What the pen spirit wrote was similar to the story told by Yin Bai. Chen Ge nodded. Looks like something else happened to Li Xiuan after she entered the school of the afterlife. Yin Bai, Yin Hong, Li Xiuan. Looks like I will have to bring her around with me. Chen Ge no longer cared about how complicated this scenario was. With the aid of his own employees, he was confident that he would be able to overcome any trouble. Putting the ballpoint pen away. Chen Gu walked back into the sick room. Once he did, Li Bing rushed over to join him. Chen Gu, are these all people like us? We already have so many friends? Yes, they are all our friends. You should try to communicate with him. In the future, there will be plenty that you need to learn from them. Chen Gu patted Li Bing on his shoulder lightly. The child appeared very harmless, he could be considered a unique presence among all the specters and lingering spirits. Many of classmates did not like him, but Chen Ge thought that he was quite a lovable fellow. Okay. Li Bing did not understand the hidden meaning in Chen Ji's words. He only felt thankful. He did not expect there were so many people like him at the school. Walking past Li Bing, Chen Ge came to Yin Bai's bedside. Now do you believe me? Yes. Yin Bai recognized her former friends. She had forgotten many things. Her memory was stopped at the time when she was still at school. For her, this was like many friends coming to visit her at the hospital. She had forgotten about her own death and did not know that her friends were also all dead. Please leave for now. I have something that I wish to talk to Yin Bai about in private. Chen Gu looked at the students from Muyang High School. They were merely lingering spirits who refused to leave the school after they died. They were not even specters. In a real fight, they could perish so easily. Chen Gu was trying to protect them. Following the students out of the room, as the door closed, he summoned all the students back into the comic. When he met the old headmaster, he hoped that these students could put in a good word or two for him. The sick room became quiet again. When Chinga returned, he noticed that Yin Bai was getting off the bed. She was winded and looked frail, but she tried to get to Chin Gu as if she had treated Chin Gu as part of her family as well. Chapter 848 Dr. Secret Are You Sure You're Fine? Chin Gu hurried to support Yin Bai. The child took an involuntarily step back, but Chin Gu still managed to grab her arm. She did not struggle and stayed by Chin Ji's side like a quiet kitten. Before your grandfather arrives, I will take good care of you. Chen Ge ruffled the girl's black hair. I will show you the world outside. You were unable to experience bliss before death, but at least you'll need to experience the warmth of the world after death. The girl did not quite understand what Chen Ge meant. She merely nodded obediently and shyly asked, What, is your name? Are you one of Grandpa's children? You can consider me a person whom your grandfather came to for help. I will protect you from further harm. Chen Ge picked up his bags. As he prepared to leave, he turned to look at the furthest room. There were four rooms in total in the school of the afterlife's nurse's office, Yin Bai and Yen Fei were in the third room. There was another room further inside. Yin Bai and Yen Fei should be considered serious cases but they still do not have the qualification to use the innermost room? Chingu was curious, so he squatted before Yin Bai. Do you know what kind of students stay in the last sick room? Only students or staff with serious injuries or those who have gone mad will be sent in there. Yin Bai's eyes were darting about when she said that, like she was afraid of the fourth room. When she spoke, her body naturally leaned away from the room. Many people have entered that room before but I rarely see people walk out of it. Perhaps there's another exit. 
There's only one exit to this place. Chen Gug guarded Yin Bai behind him. He activated the recorder and slunk over to the entrance of the fourth room. The member of staff responsible for the nurse's office was a red specter, Chen Gu had met him before. The white coat that he was wearing was just a disguise. He gripped the doorknob and turned it slowly. Chen Gu realized that the door was not locked, so he pushed it open slightly. Blood leaked out from the gap. When the door was fully open, Chen Gu narrowed his eyes and used his body to block the rest of the students. The fourth room was not for patients. There were no beds or medical equipment, only many cracked mirrors. Blood-drenched white coats hung on each of the mirrors. They were of different sizes, but they should belong to one person. Chen Gu covered his mouth and carefully entered the fourth room. A sticky warm feeling crawled on every inch of his skin. Walking into the room was like wading into an ocean of blood. The bloody stench overwhelmed and suffocated him. Why would there be a room like this in the nurse's office? I saw these mirrors in the school reconstructed by the painter. Chen Gu stopped before the mirror closest to him. He pulled off the white coat. The surface of the mirror was blood red and filled the cracks. This is similar to the mirror I saw in the Eastern Campus Staff Dormitory's maintenance room. His finger caressed the surface, and it almost cut Chen Gu. Even though I'm standing before the mirror, I can't see my reflection only a slate of redness. He was about to move to the next mirror when a voice suddenly echoed in his ears. Save me. Please don't go. Save me. Stopping in his tracks, Chen Gu turned around and realized that the voice was coming from the mirror. Narrowing his eyes, Chen Gu looked at the cracked mirror. Is someone trapped inside the mirror? Save me. It's dark in here. I can't see anything. Don't close the window. Help me, please? The voice became clear like there was someone standing on the other side of the mirror. How can I help you? Chen Gu took one step back. He knew very well that feelings like pity and empathy were lacking in this world cultivated by despair. Being kind to others would often bring tragedy. There is a piece that's misplaced on the top left corner of the mirror. If you find it and replace it as I say, you'll be able to see me. Is it that simple? Chen Gu nudged forward. Just as he was about to reach the mirror, he suddenly stopped. I can help you, but what will I get in return? What do you want? As long as I have it, I will give it to you. How about this? I'll ask you a few questions first. If your answers are satisfactory, I'll help you. Chen Gu pointed at those white coats. How much do you know about the doctor here? The man looks quite scary. I am the real doctor. The monster trapped me inside this mirror. Blood squeezed out from the cracks. The man reacted harshly, and his emotions were fraying. He is not an employee of our school, he's an outsider. An outsider? Save me, quick. He's coming back. I need to tell the headmaster everything that happened here. More blood appeared on the surface, and each crack were shuddering. You said he's an outsider. What evidence do you have? He comes from a hospital with the name Xian. I do not know whether he's a doctor or patient, but I know he's mad. He's experimenting with something here, all the teachers have been tricked by him. The information revealed by the mirror attracted Chin Ji's attention. He happened to know one hospital with the name Xian. It was the four-star mission mentioned by the Black Phone, the cursed hospital. This is getting more interesting. Chen Gu remembered many details. When he was doing the trial mission in Liwan City. Clues related to the cursed hospital had appeared as well. The female patients wearing the patient's garb had ridden the bus to Liwan City. The private hospital in Liwan City had been hiding the patients who had escaped from the cursed hospital. Chen Gu remembered the details very clearly. The source of the problem was a little boy and the boy's garb had the name Xian on it. In the end, the boy had been taken by the red high heels. The hospital has appeared everywhere. What is its purpose? 
When Chin Gu was considering this, the man in the mirror kept pleading. I will temporarily trust you, Chin Gu said. The doctor is an outsider in disguise, but why would he place so many mirrors here? What is the meaning of a mirror in the school of the afterlife? Each mirror represents a living person. Save me, let me out. There's no time. He'll be back soon. After you let me out, I will tell you everything. The voice became more desperate, but it did not affect Chin Gu at all. If the doctor returned, then he would take him down. Actually, when he saw the doctor, Chin Gu had already formulated some plans for him. If not for the doctor's quick escape, things might have been different now. I can save you. I hope you aren't lying to me. Chin Ji's eyes zeroed in on the mirror, his gaze was frighteningly calm. Walking to the mirror, Chin Gu looked at the top left corner. Which cracked piece? Just at the top left side, come closer so you can see better. The voice in the mirror urged Chen Gu. There are many pieces. Which one are you talking about? The small one, come closer. Okay. Chen Gu took another big step forward until his body was almost stuck to the surface. Is this it? Yes, that's it. Right there. The voice suddenly grew. A scarred hand reached out from inside the mirror to grab at Chen Gu. You are the missing piece. Get in here. Replace me. The monster was halfway through when he noticed that something was wrong. He tried to yank Chen Gu into the mirror, but Chen Gu refused to budge. The scary thing was that he was unable to pull his arm back. Don't worry, I'm going to save you using another method. Chen Gu stepped back. Suin, pull him out. The monster in the mirror only then realized that his hand was grabbing another person's arm. The person was wearing a red shirt, standing close to Chen Gu. Wait. If I can't find a scapegoat, I will. He did not get the chance to finish, Suin pulled him directly out from the mirror. The cracks on the mirror were like knives. When the monster was pulled out, the crack severed his body. He was lacerated, and blood dyed the mirror redder. Suin held on to the monster's five remaining fingers, but Chen Gu did notice that the monster inside the mirror was wearing a white coat, so at least one thing was not a lie, he was indeed the real doctor. I did not wish to harm you, but you harmed yourself. It was not my intention to do things like this, but thankfully. Chen Gu looked around. There are plenty of other mirrors here. Chapter 849, Non-Smilers, the fourth room of the nurse's office, was more like a prison where various types of people were imprisoned. Those imprisoned there were all adults, there were no students. Looks like the fake doctor knows the rules of the school well. He does not go after the students, probably to avoid angering the school's consciousness. Chin Gu looked at the mirrors, and each of them was trapping a monster. They were fully assimilated by the negative emotions and they were not possible candidates for friends. He walked through the room, where pools of blood were left on the ground, before finally stopping before the last mirror at the corner of the room. This mirror looks different. The other mirrors were covered with doctor's coats, but this mirror was covered with a patient's garb. It was tattered and bloody, and there was a excyon sewn around the chest area. This outfit doesn't come from the school of the afterlife, it should have been taken by the Red Spectre from the cursed hospital. Even though Chin Gu had not been to that hospital, he had met its residents more than once already. Looks like the doctor is a patient from that hospital in disguise, but the question is, how did the monster from that four-star mission arrive here? Chen Gu could not figure it out. He noticed that the monsters at the cursed hospital, be it Red Spectres or lingering spirits, seemed to be trying their best to escape. Only a greater red specter could cause a normal red specter to run. The doctor looks like he's much more powerful than a normal red specter, so what has really happened at that hospital? Did even a red specter have to escape to another four-star scenario to survive? There were many questions, but Chen Gu did not mind it. As long as he could find and detain the doctor, most of the questions could be answered. Boss, don't get too close to that mirror. It gives me a bad feeling. 
It was Bai Chilin who spoke. His eyes were filled with blood, and a dangerous aura wreathed him. Can you see the person trapped inside the mirror? Chen Gu was very careful. Knowing there was danger, he retreated. This was the world behind the door, he could not afford to be too careful. Bai Chilin, who had his hand in his pocket, stood to the left of the mirror, and Su Yin, who had his head lowered, stood at the right, the two of them guarded Chen Gu. I cannot see it, but I can sense his malice. This person is very powerful. Bai Chilin glanced at Su Yin, but the latter did not reply. After a signal from Chen Gu, without saying a word, the bloody palm pressed on the surface of the mirror. Bang! The mirror that was already cracked became more splintered like it could not hold the pressure. If you refuse to come out, we'll ruin the mirror and you'll be trapped in there forever. For us, we're losing a not-so-important mirror, but you'll lose your last hope. You should know which choice to make. Other than that, don't think about resisting. There are five red specters in this room. I'm not threatening you, I'm trying to help you. After spending so much time with Chen Gu, Bai Chilin had learned how to deal with other people from Chen Gu. Chen Ji's soul reflection appeared in the blood mirror. Gradually, the reflection started to shift until the face turned into that of a stranger. This looked very curious. The reflection still had Chen Ji's body, but the face was different. You're also outsiders, right? The man in the mirror had a low voice, and a pool of evil hid in his eyes. But strangely enough, he had a ready smile for the world as if that was the only expression he knew. Since you have shown up here, it means that the madman has already been killed, he would never allow a living person to enter this room. The man in the mirror seemed to recognize Chen Gu because his eyes kept falling onto Chen Gu. If you wish to capture me as your scapegoat, I advise you to change your mind. The last specter who planned to do that is still in my shadow, too afraid to face me. Chen Gu took a step back to maintain a safe distance from the mirror. I don't know why you'd think that. Actually, I mean none of you any harm. You've killed the madman, and that has helped me with my revenge. I should be thanking you, why would I harm you? The man's smile widened further, turning his face uglier. You look like a clever person, so I won't talk circles around you. Tell me everything about the doctor and this room, or I'll destroy the mirror. Don't worry, I will tell you everything. Only after you understand my value will I be able to live. No matter what he said, the man would have a smile on his face. He only knew how to smile, and this made Chen Gu uncomfortable as it reminded him of someone. When he took the bus to Liwan City, there had been a passenger who only ever smiled. During the last mission in Liwan City, the passenger had even helped Chen Gu, but that was for the man's self-preservation as well. After the mission in Liwan City ended, the strange man had disappeared. At the time, Chen Gu did not think much of it. So, he was surprised that he had encountered someone similar at the school of the afterlife. They were always smiling like it was a disease that they could not control. Let's talk about the red specter masquerading as the doctor first. How did he get to this school? Chen Gu was not sure whether the man would lie to him or not, so he decided to ask some unimportant questions first. He was a patient that escaped from a certain hospital. I can't tell which specific hospital it was, because once you mention the name, you will be cursed. The man's first answer provided an important name for Chen Gu. Be it the black phone or other people, none named the hospital directly, like the name was a curse. The cursed hospital? Chen Ji's eyes narrowed. After he said that, the brows of the man in the mirror lifted, and the blood in his eyes amplified like his emotions were getting out of control. Yes, some do call it that. Why would the fake doctor escape from there? I don't know. I'm not from there. I was a teacher at this school. You're lying. Before the man finished, Chen Gu cut him off. He looked around before grabbing a chair to walk toward the mirror. Who are you? Seeing the threat that was imminent, the man's eyes darkened, but his smile brightened. Fine, actually, I'm like you. I came from outside. You can call me, or people like me, 
the non-smilers. The man would pause with each word like he was saying something important. Chapter 850, Begging, Persistence, and the sky, the cracked pieces of the mirror fell from the surface, creating a silvery, tingling sound as they hit the ground. Behind the red mirror, the face of the smiling man was twisted. His smile was growing bigger the closer he was to death. It was as if the closer he was to death, the more he was unable to control his urge to laugh and smile. We are called non-smilers because father once said that we do not deserve the ability to smile. The man in the mirror seemed to have remembered something, and his lips curled open. Even through the mirror, one could hear the spine-chilling laugh like the words mentioned by his father were the most humorous joke in the world. Father? He was a doctor at the hospital. He was not a good father, but he was the best doctor I have met in the world. There was a trace of pain in the man's crazed eyes. Other than that, there was also a trace of terror and passion. Other doctors only care about treatment, but while he saves people, he has been busy killing them. He believes that both angels and demons are hidden inside the human heart, and for that, he has personally constructed a heaven and a hell. Is the cursed hospital the hell? No, that is the heaven, but it is a heaven that everyone wishes to escape from. The man in the mirror had exposed his true personality. He looked at Chen Gu and laughed happily. He seemed to enjoy having this conversation with Chen Gu. Since it is a heaven, why would people want to escape? Chen Gu had a simple conclusion regarding the man inside the mirror, a madman. That was my father's heaven, not our heaven. The man pressed his face against the mirror. The cracked surface printed on his face like it was cutting his face into pieces, and it looked startlingly scary. If the heaven is already so scary, what does the hell built by your father look like? No one has seen the hell. Do you think the people who have entered the hell could stand here and talk to you? The man's eyes were as wide as saucers. His mouth was open to the maximum of a human's musculature limit. If his smile grew any bigger, it would have torn his face in half. Hey, why are you so interested in that hospital? You already know some information about the hospital. When I said I was a teacher at this school, you realized immediately that I was lying. Is that because you have encountered other non-smilers before? You have seen my family? Or is it because you have also received an invitation from that school? The middle-aged man in the mirror was the epitome of evil, but he was also very clever. From a few details, he deduced a lot of information. Chin Go normally would not waste time facing this kind of clever person. He silently gave a sign to Suin so that he could find a chance to kill the man. Whether this man was enemy or friend, after he was killed, he would be turned into feed for the haunted house. This was the lesson that Chen Gu had learned from his many interactions with Dr. Gao. Never mind. It doesn't matter whether it's because you have seen my family or you have received the invitation from that hospital. Once you are connected to that hospital, you are unable to escape. He will continue to appear beside you in various forms. Until one day, when you peel open your eyes, you will suddenly realize you are lying on top of a cold slab of operating table and starting a cursed game that is uniquely yours. The man's tone did not sound like he was threatening Chen Gu, he was merely stating an inevitable truth. I don't need you to worry about me. Chen Gu stared at the mirror. You just mentioned that you have other family? What? Can't you see it? Like you, I was once a living person. However, the things that accompanied you are friendship and family, but the things that accompanied us are pain and hatred. We spent our days in the eerie, despairing hospital, watching the spread of death and disease until they one day decided to crawl all over us. Pa. The man slapped his palm heavily on the surface on the mirror. His body was pressed hard against the many splintery gaps. Father does not appreciate it when we cry, so we can only smile and laugh. When we are not feeling well, we need to smile, when we are sick, we need to laugh, the greater the pain in our heart, the harder we need to laugh. But no matter how hard we smile, he still does not like us. He said we have a horrible looking smile, and he said that our smiles are not sincere. The man's laughter came from inside the mirror. 
His face was leaning close to the surface, knocking against it repeatedly. But look, look at me. I am laughing so happily. Can't you see that I am laughing so happily? Blood slid down the wounds. The man's face was cut by the sharp edges. He touched the blood on the corner of his lips. We are smiling at every single moment, but we are called the non-smilers. Isn't that the most hilarious thing you have heard? Perhaps I have a high laughing point, or maybe we are in a different mental space, but I can't see how is that funny. If you tell me more information about the hospital and the school, I can consider helping you. Chin Gu had interacted with many mad people before. He was not a doctor and was unable to cure these people. The only thing he could do was filter through these people's words, maintain his own determination, and prevent himself from being assimilated by the madness. Actually, it was pretty hard to persuade Chin Gu away from his conviction. He had seen a completely different world before. In a deep conversation, it would be hard to tell who was being convinced. Chin Gu could trade ideas with certain people, but this man was definitely not one of them. Looks like my guess was correct. You have seen my family before. Who could it be? My poorest big brother? The youngest, dumbest little brother? Or my big sister, who still has her complete body? Or could it be my other sister? No, wait, that's impossible. If she has seen you, she would have fallen in love with you and would stop at nothing to kill you. Can you please shut up for a moment? Chinga realized that when the man shed his disguise and exposed his true self, the true self was a very chatty person. From now on, I will do the questioning, and you only need to answer. Okay, I will tell you everything that I know. You have met my family before. I believe it won't be some kind of happy memory. I. The man leaned closer to the surface until his body was almost forcing its way through. Blood flowed on the surface on the mirror, but the man did not appear to be in any pain. Madness and illness were not adequate terms to describe this man anymore. However, once the man did this, Chingun noticed something else. This man who called himself a non-smiler was dressed fully in red. He was a bona fide red specter. Chinga thought back to the non-smiler from Liwan City. He realized that this whole family of mad people appeared to be red specters. What is your relationship with the patient that's escaped from the cursed hospital? Why did he end up trapping you inside the mirror? Chinga got straight to the point, but internally, he was thinking about something else. This red specter appears to be in his weakest moment. After killing and consuming him, perhaps there will be a new half-red specter amid my rank of employees. We were in a cooperative relationship. With my power alone, I was unable to escape from the hospital, so I needed a helper. How did you end up being trapped by him behind the mirror? After escaping from the hospital, our goal was achieved. Both of us wanted to kill the other, so that was normal. That's normal? Chin Gu still had a hard time placing himself in the shoes of a mad person. And then what? You were apprehended by him and got sent inside a mirror? Neither of us could really harm the other. The plan we had was to hide behind another door after we escaped from the hospital, but to our surprise, there was a very scary presence behind this door. It is on the same level as the hospital. The man in the mirror pointed at the top of his head. Have you seen the eye outside the window? The eye outside the window? Chen Ge frowned. You mean the blood-red sun that has been shining on the entire school of the afterlife? Yes, it is the real owner here. The few fights between me and my partner attracted its attention, so we wished to find a backup plan for ourselves. The man seemed to have read Chen Ji's mind already. We wished to find a path that we could use to enter and leave the school. We put aside our differences and went into another cooperation. We noticed one peculiarity about this place, you could not find a normal mirror in the entirety of this school. You noticed that as well? The owner of the school appears to have difficulty facing its reflection. It hates itself, and it has given up on itself. It refuses to see itself. The man's words caused Chin Ji's eyes to grow large. He had realized something important. 
go on. So, we started to look for mirrors. Then we came to a startling discovery. In this school, every single mirror is made from a memory. The mirrors are hiding someone who hates themselves. Looking at our previous selves is not dissimilar to thinking about the past. We have looked through many mirrors, but an accident happened during our search. This mirror that I am in is different from other mirrors. I found myself trapped in here after entering it. The smile on the man's face sent chills down Chen Ji's spine. After my partner noticed the strangeness, he did not follow me in here. That was truly sad. I should have acted more authentically back then to trick him. Even in that situation, you wish to entrap your friend? You are truly a sick person that has no cure. Chen Gu studied the mirror with a new eye. He also slowly discovered the difference between this mirror and the other mirrors. The blood on the surface was all inside the mirror, and there was a layer of dust that could not be rubbed away on the surface. The edge of the mirror had signs of being charred. This has been burned before. Whose memory could this mirror be carrying? The painters or the first door pusher that entered the school of the afterlife? Chin Ji's original plan was to kill the man inside the mirror, but now, he started to have second thoughts. If he wanted to kill the man, he would need to destroy the mirror or enter the mirror directly. Destroying the mirror meant destroying a valuable clue and he might be trapped inside the mirror if he entered it. Chinga realized that the non-smiler in the mirror had altered the situation in a significant way without even realizing it. If he was not telling the truth and had created all these details to lie to himself, then this man was madder than Chinga thought. It would be less worrying if such a clever and mad person was made into nutrients, Chinga thought, but the expression on his face did not change. Other than the mirrors, what else did you find out? For the time being, Chin Gu did not plan to enter the mirror. He wanted to obtain as much information as he could. This school is far more dangerous than we predicted. Do not be fooled by the appearance. Other than that, I have seen many interesting things inside the mirror, but I am unable to tell you now, because I am still inside the mirror. If I said those things, I might be eaten by the things inside the mirror. The man could not have been Franker. He possessed a lot of information, but he would only tell Chen Gu after he was rescued from inside the mirror. I know what to do now. Oh bye, carry this mirror with you. We will leave the nurse's office first. Chen Gu wanted to wait for Zhang Ye to wake up before he continued dealing with the non-smilers. The best solution was to ignore him for now. Find some abandoned clothes or something to wrap around the mirror. I do not wish to see the man's face. Chen Gu was the first to walk out from the room. When Yin Bai and Li Bing saw them, they were relieved and quickly hurried over. But once they saw Bai Chilin and Su Yin, who were following behind Chen Gu, they stopped where they were. I need to find the patient that disguised himself as the doctor. Only by capturing him can I confirm the statements given by the non-smiler. Chen Gu was concerned about the hospital. The non-smiler was right. He did not receive any mission related to the hospital from the black phone, but the things related to the hospital had already started to show up intermittently around him. He did not know how this would continue to progress, and that unsettled him somewhat. I should focus on what is in front of me for now. When that day arrives that I have nowhere to turn, if worst comes to worst, I will lead the ghost fetus to the cursed hospital and we will all perish together. That was a good idea, but Chin Gu knew that the chance of that succeeding would be infinitesimally small. For now, the only good news is that I still have time. Clearing this school of the afterlife's mission will be the key. Chin Gu glanced at Yin Bai and Yan Fei. The two children were weak and needed other people's support to help them walk. The fact that they were the people who were qualified to be the door pushers was probably very hard to believe. Zhu Long, Wang Yicheng, and the rest regained their power slowly after their memories were awakened. Does this mean I need to help Yan Fei and Yin Bai remember their past? But hasn't Yin Bai already remembered many things on her own? She has even met her old friends from Muyang High School. No wait. 
There is no mention of Ian Hong at all in her memory. The key to her missing memory lies with Ian Hong. Only by finding that girl will Ian Bai's memory be complete. To Chin Gu, Ying Bai was different from the other candidates due to the layer of relationship between the old headmaster of Muyang High School. He treated Ying Bai as someone that he could depend on. I seem to remember Ying Hong's class was not that far from the nurse's office. Chin Gu returned to the spot where he had run into Ying Hong. The old headmaster has come to the school many times, so he should know about the presence of Ying Hong. Does that mean, in his heart, he treats Yin Hong as one of his family as well? Quickening his steps, Chin Gu was about to push open the door to Yin Hong's classroom when an announcement was suddenly broadcast in the corridor. Emergency, emergency! All the students, please stay in your classrooms and do not wander about aimlessly. Emergency, emergency! The broadcast was repeating the same thing. The tone was very serious like something harrowing had happened at the school of the afterlife. The more dangerous the situation, the simpler and more succinct the emergency broadcast. Had the painter and Chang Wenyu started to move? Chen Gu quickly walked to the window. He realized that the blood fog had thickened greatly, and there was something banging itself against the school madly in the fog. Chapter 851, Yin Hong's Personality, What is That? There were red human shadows showing in the blood fog. Because they were of the same color as the fog, Chin Gu could not see them clearly. Oh well. Even if the sky falls, there's someone taller to hold it. Chin Gu turned his gaze away and opened the door. The students were studying on their own. Since they heard the door open, they all turned to look at the door. Carry on. We're here for one person. Chen Gu walked to the podium. His eyes scanned the class, but could not find Yin Hong. Where is she? He walked to an empty seat at the third row. Is this Yin Hong's seat? The nearby students did not appear like they were familiar with the girl, and no one spoke. Aren't you guys classmates? Chen Gu looked through the girl's textbook. It had Yin Hong's name in it. That's right. This is her seat, but where is she? Chen Gu turned to Yin Hong's deskmate with a scary expression. Just now, an old man came to fetch her. He said he was Yin Hong's grandfather. Do you know where they've gone? He said that he has something to tell her, but they have been gone for quite some time already. I believe she will be back soon. Yin Hong's deskmate was a bit scared of Chen Gu, or rather, he was more scared of Su Yin and Bai Chiu Lin, who carried the mirror behind Chen Gu. Those two did not appear normal. The old headmaster has led Yin Hong away. He sure moves fast, but today, I'm not going to let him escape from me. Chen Gu shoved Yin Hong's stuff into his backpack and then passed it to Su Yin. He stood before Yin Hong's deskmate. Which way did they go? The Western Corridor. Okay, I won't disturb your class anymore. It's very dangerous outside. You might survive this ordeal if you stay obediently in the classroom. Chen Gu led his people out of the room. They stopped at the corner of the corridor. Yin Bai, your grandfather is now in the school. Chen Gu did not know how to break the news about Yin Hong to Yin Bai. The girl looked kind, but she seemed to have purposely forgotten every memory that was related to Yin Hong. Perhaps those memories were too painful, and this was the body's defense mechanism. Grandpa is here? Why hasn't he come to see me? He would have gone to you first since he loves you that much. This only proves that something has happened to him. Chen Gu had Su Yin search through Yin Hong's bag to look for clues. At the same time, he took out the comic and told Yin Bai, your grandfather is the kindest person I've met. We can't let him suffer this danger alone. Everyone wishes for a reunion. Only with him present will the family be complete. In few sentences, Chen Gu had convinced Yin Bai. I understand your grandfather's personality. Even if he's in danger, he'll try not to get us involved. He'll take it on alone, so our only option is to go find him. Chen Gu grabbed Yin Bai's cold hand. Yin Bai, you are the only one who can help your grandfather. 
when Chinga said that, Inbai understood the severity of the situation. She bit on her thin lips and whispered, I made a promise with Grandpa before. If, one day, I was very afraid and helpless and felt like I could not hold on anymore, I should go to the old campus on the western side of school. Wait. Chin Good shushed Dean Bai and had Bai Chou Lin carry the mirror away. He led Dean Bai and Su In away from the mirror. Continue, what about the old campus? He told me to look for a burned building. There is a red door hidden inside the ruin. I was to find it and then push it open. Yin Bai was the kind that would not lie to others. It can't be that simple. If one could leave by pushing open that door, the old headmaster would have escaped with Yin Bai a long time ago instead of waiting for so long. Chen Go looked into Yin Bai's eyes. The latter's eyes were clear and clean, and they had nothing to hide. Is that all? Yes. Okay, we'll head there now. Perhaps we might run into your grandfather on the way. Chin Go got everyone to rush to the western side of campus. As they moved, he accepted the backpack from Suin. This was a normal school bag used by a girl, but Chen Go found many doodling in Yin Hong's textbooks and study materials. There were patches here and there. They looked ugly and unsightly, unlike a girl's books. Why does she like doodling so much? Is it to cover up something? Chin Go looked through the books and finally found some spots that had not been fully doodled over. He held the page up to the light and managed to see some faint writing. Why hasn't she died? Why isn't she dead? All the doodles are covering the curses towards someone? Chen Go put the textbook back. He picked out several balls of paper at the bottom of the bag. These had been discovered inside Yin Hong's drawer. At the time, Chin Gu did not want to miss anything, so he had shoved them into the bag as well. Opening the crumpled paper, the front side had some math formula, but the back was covered in tiny lines of words. I am unable to control myself any longer. I can always see her, but she has forgotten about me. That shouldn't be. Blood fell on my eyes. It was not a happy experience. I have helped her so many times. Why couldn't she help me once? How hard is it to die? Just like what I did to them. She has forgotten the promise she made me. It is because of me that she is alive. Those who loved her have never appeared, and those who said they will take care of her disappeared at the most crucial moment. I am the only who stayed. She should be the most thankful toward me. Again and again, why can't she see what I have sacrificed for her? I have done so much, and I ask for nothing but for her to die. I just need her to die, but don't worry, I will live on her behalf. Why does she refuse to die? In this world, no one will love her other than me. What else is she hoping for? I think I understand it now. That fake person with a mouth full of lies is here. A liar who has never fulfilled any of his promises. Is that the reason she refuses to die? I understand what to do now. Just like those who have bullied her. Ha ha ha. The handwriting on the paper was hard to read. When Chinga reached the end, he sucked in a cold breath. I'm afraid we have to move faster, the old headmaster is in real trouble. The old headmaster was a truly kind person. With Chen Ji's understanding of him, even if Yin Hong wanted to kill him, he would not fight back. That was because Yin Hong possessed Yin Bai's appearance, and the old headmaster had always felt guilty toward her. Quick! The Western Side Chen Ge really did not wish for tragedy to befall the old headmaster. Unprincipled kindness is cruelty toward ourselves. I hope he is safe. Chapter 852 Outline of the Blood Red City To find the old headmaster, Chin Gu had visited Muyang High School several times. This would be the first time that he had come so close to the old headmaster, so whoever stood in his way would be his enemy. From Chin Ji's perspective, bumping into each other would only happen in dramas, he had already decided to do everything in his power to find the old headmaster. It was not only because the old headmaster knew how to lead the school of the afterlife, it was also because he knew plenty about his parents, 
and that would help in Chin Ji's understanding of the haunted house, the black phone, and even himself. Abandoning everyone and risking his life at a four-star scenario, does he even place the students in his class in his heart? Chin Gu wished to know the answer, so he needed to meet the old headmaster in person. The situation at the school turned creepier. Slapping sounds echoed on the windows, red fog stuck to the glass, and he could see cracks starting to form. Most of three-star scenarios are an enclosed scenario, like Third Sick Hall. Due to the uniqueness of Liwan City, the Black Phone determined it as a 3.5-star scenario. Chin Gov looked at the window, and a question bubbled up. I saw a broken window in the Third Sick Hall before, and Men Nan has been trying to fix it. According to him, if the broken window is not fixed and is seen by other dirty things, it might attract things that are very dangerous. The third sick hall is closed upon itself. Due to his weakness, Men Nan never thought of leaving the scenario, so he did not dare imagine what the outside of third sick hall looks like. Looking at the rolling red fog outside the window, Chin Gu was reminded of the coffin village. The world behind the door in that village was also red, but the ghost in the well was far more powerful than Men Nan. She was as powerful as Zhang Ye before consuming the shadow's heart, so she had the power to protect that little village. But she has been trying to research the methods to reincarnate, to shake off the identity of a ghost. She should have seen something very scary behind the door, and that's the reason behind her desperation. To be able to make a red specter so scared, that has to be the real terror behind the door. His duel with Dr. Gao in the underground morgue flashed across his mind. Dr. Gao had chosen to suffer all the sin behind the door on his own. He had buried the door and personally ruined the door that he had opened. After the door collapsed, the ceiling made from blood vessels and organs had crumbled, and the glow of the blood-red moon had filtered down from above. Chin Gu remembered clearly what he had seen. From the opening in the underground morgue, he had looked out and seen a red city. It was an endless, red city, that is what is beyond these scary scenarios. Or rather, no matter how many stars the scenarios have, are they all part of this red city? Chinga felt like he was getting closer to the truth, but at the same time, he grew more worried. Dr. Gao was the scariest enemy that he had ever faced, he was cautious, powerful, and had many helpers. Chinga even suspected that the suicide was part of his plan. However, an existence like that had become a madman entangled in chains after leaving his original scenario for a few days. Moreover, Dr. Gao loved his wife, that was the single conviction keeping him alive. Chinga knew that even if Dr. Gao's soul got destroyed, he would not allow anyone to hurt his wife, not even her dead body. But in reality, when they met again, Dr. Gao only had his wife's skull left. Chin Gu could not imagine what had happened to Dr. Gao behind the door and what kind of terror he had encountered. He had decided to cooperate with Dr. Gao in Liwan City because he wanted to know everything he could about the world behind the door. This was because he suspected that his parents had entered that red city. I've been to many three-star scenarios. They are all closed off, so four-star scenarios. Chin Gu was thinking when he heard something next to him. Pa. The window next to him suddenly shattered. Numerous glass shard sprayed at him, but thankfully, Suin helped to block them all. The glass cracked? The school window was broken. This scenario was connected to the outside world. There were outlines of buildings in the fog, and bizarrely, the distance between the school and those buildings was decreasing, like they were moving. This way. Screams and footsteps came from the end of the corridor. Chin Gu hurried and had everyone hide inside one of the classrooms. Blood fog slithered in through the broken window like a red python seeking its prey. Moments later, seven men in staff uniforms and the teachers hurried over. The leader was Mr. Lei, whom Chin Gu had met earlier. They were carrying tools and fixed the windows in several seconds. But to Chin Ji's surprise, although seven people came to fix the window, six left one had disappeared. Does each window represent a soul or lingering spirit? Thought Chen Gu. The door pusher opened the door at their most desperate moment, 
so their despair can be counted as a kind of lingering spirit. It is because they are unable to resolve it that they sink ever deeper. This despair isolated their heart from the world, and it is the despair that prevented their scenario from interacting with the Red City, which is how a fully enclosed scenario is born. For three-star scenarios, a broken window is something dangerous. They have never interacted with the Red City before, but it is different for four-star scenario. Based on Mr. Lee's reaction, they appear to encounter this often. They have already gotten used to the Red City outside the school. The more Chen Gu thought about it, the more sense it made. The original door pusher at the school had already been consumed. The door had weakened greatly, but it had not been destroyed. After surviving the hardest period, the door had become something else. The strange phenomenon happening now probably has something to do with the painter or Chang Wenyu. I cannot predict what those two mad people will do. After Mr. Lei's group left, Chin Gu led his people out of the classroom and rushed toward the western side of the school. The alarm had stopped, and there was no one in the corridor, only a death-like stillness. Chapter 853, I've been searching so long for you, the library was at the center of the school of the afterlife. After Chin Gu left the mirror in the library, he was given a glimpse of the real school of the afterlife. But as he walked toward the edge of the school, more strange things started to appear around him. The school was huge, but the students and staff mostly gathered at the center of the school, the classrooms and rooms at outer edges of the school were mostly empty. If they were just empty rooms, it would have been fine, but upon a closer inspection, Chinga realized that there were various stains left in those classrooms. Some of the classrooms appeared to have been soaked in water. The wooden tables and chairs were sodden, and they gave off a strange smell. Some of the classrooms were barred with wooden boards. Looking through the gaps, he saw that all the drawers were pinned down with nails as if someone was afraid that the things inside the drawers might escape. That was not the strangest part. When Chin Gu walked down a corridor that was far away from the center of the school, he saw an abandoned hall. The decoration of the hall was similar to the hall that he had seen when he went to challenge Xian High's haunted house. The haunted house in Xian High was replicated according to the diary, so the real owner of the diary had spent their life at this hall before. Chin Gu had read the diary himself but he realized that the description inside the diary and the real school of the afterlife did not match up. A banner that welcomed new students hung on the wall, and several mannequins stood on the cement stage. They had cheery expressions, and stuck on their backs were pieces of paper with various negative emotions like anger and envy written on them. These mannequins are smiling so happily when facing the students, but the words on their backs are negative emotions. Is this some kind of hint? When Chin Gu passed the hall, he clearly saw the mannequins on stage move their heads toward him, and the expressions on their faces changed. There was something special about this hall, a scary presence should preside there. What are you looking at? Look some more, and I'll consume all of you. Through the window, Chin Gu yelled threats at the mannequins like a big bully. The mannequins reacted cleverly. They swiftly turned their heads back as if everything that Chen Gu had seen earlier was just an illusion. If I was not in a hurry to find the old headmaster, do you think I would let you go so easily? Chen Gu stared at the mannequin that had glanced at him earlier. It's pointless to hide. I've remembered you. There were many strange rooms at the school of the afterlife. It was like a box of chocolate with different flavors for Chen Gu he had no idea what he would encounter next. I've only checked the western side of the school. If the other parts of the school are also like this, then this scenario is enormous. The thought that he had a chance to move such a scenario to his haunted house caused Chin Ji's eyes to turn red. To be able to possess such a large, complicated, and scary scenario should be the lifelong dream of every haunted house owner. Just the school of the afterlife alone covers all the scary scenarios related to schools. There are numerous classrooms and rooms for me to transform. I can even replicate all the stories I heard at the Ghost Stories Society here. Unfortunately, the scenario unlocked by the black phone is only a shell. I will need to find the employees and stories to fill it up myself. 
The thought of the black phone made Chin Gook calm down again. It was as if he was being splashed by a pail of cold water while standing next to a fireplace in winter. The backpack had been found, and everything but the black phone had been there. Based on current information, the most likely scenario was that it had been taken away by Chong Wenyu. I was too careless. I shan't let this happen again. Chin Gu was good at analyzing the situation. He would take note of everything that he had experienced so that he could correct issues little by little. Finally, he would burn the records. It was this caution that allowed him to survive until now. After leaving this place, I should make a few customized phones. That looks similar to the black phone and hide a specter inside each of them. A while of running later, the white painted walls started to have the doodling of children. The amount of litter on the ground increased, and trash appeared around the corner. The stench of blood in the air lightened, and in its place was the smell of burning. We're almost there. Be careful of the surroundings. Chinga opened the comic to release the smelly boy from Western Jiujiang Private Academy. He was a special specter. He had no shape or form and was made up of a bad smell. That meant that he was not easily injured and could protect his teammates from a large area. Walking forward, the paint on the wall started to peel to reveal the black and red bricks behind it. Signs of a fire started to appear. This should be the place. Chenga got in by to stand beside him. Your grandfather is in a dangerous situation now. Someone is trying to harm him, and only we can save him. In Bai's only family was the old headmaster. Hearing the stern warning from Chin Gu, she was rightfully frightened. Are you sure he hasn't told you any other information? Yes, there's nothing else. Then, we'll have to look through the place ourselves. Chin Gu tried to see things from the old headmaster's perspective. Both In Hong and In Bai were part of Li Xuein. He would not just escape with In Hong and abandon In Bai. Chin Gu had no idea what was at the end of the school of the afterlife. The closer he was to the edge, the greater the anxiety in his heart. After walking down two corridors, the scene before him changed completely. Signs of a fire were all over the walls, and rubble littered the ground. This place looks familiar. Chen Gu walked to one of the classrooms. He pushed lightly on the charred wooden door, and it collapsed easily. He looked at the tables and chairs in the rooms. His fingers touched them gingerly. I've seen these arrangements in Muyang High School before. This classroom. A pinprick of pain came from his fingertip. Chin Gu then noticed that there were lines of words carved into the surface of the table, and he had seen the exact writing when he first explored Muyang High School. Why would Muyang High School's classroom appear in the old section of the School of the Afterlife? Is this just a coincidence, or is the entire School of the Afterlife made up of various abandoned schools? Chin Gu wanted to confirm the thought, so he hurried to the last classroom of the corridor. Walking down the corridor, when Chin Gu pushed open the door of the last classroom, he was baffled. Each of the chairs in the classrooms had a burned school uniform on it, and in the middle of the room sat a cute, obedient girl. She looked 80% identical to In Bai. Just across the girl stood a rotund old man. He was facing away from Chin Gu, but even from the back, Chin Gu felt he looked very familiar. Chapter 854 Are you going to leave us behind? Similar to the person from my memory, do you know how hard I've been looking for you? Chin Gu remembered it very clearly. It was a night of heavy rain, and the clock on the phone showed it was 2 a.m. He was rampaging down the corridors of the abandoned school. When he passed the last classroom, that was the first time that he had encountered the old headmaster. The kind, rotund old man stood at the podium. His eyes met Chin Ji's, and their paths crossed for less than a second. Now, their paths were crossing again at the school of the afterlife. The old headmaster probably did not expect that brief encounter to be something that would change his life forever. His scalp turned numb, and a chill crawled down his spine. The figure who stood before In Hong's desk slowly turned around. When he saw Chin Gu, his expression was very unnatural. You are. Chen Gu. 
Chenga took large strides toward the old man. We have met in Muyang High School before. If you cannot remember it, I can show you the video, because I was in the middle of a live stream back then. I believe I have an impression of you, but now I have something else to do. After I'm done, we can catch up and talk. The old headmaster seemed to know Chen Ji's secrets. He knew that he was different from his students' lingering spirits. Once his life entangled with Chen Ge, there would be endless problems, so he made up his decision instantly as he grabbed In Hong's arm and prepared to leave. What is more important than the children at Muyang High School? Chen Ge took out the comic from his backpack. Headmaster, everyone misses you. When you are away, the students lose their smiles. You are the backbone of Muyang High School. Without you, the home is not complete. Be it from his expression or voice, the content or tone, Chen Gu was the epitome of sincerity. Seeing that his students were all on Chen Ji's side, there was a change to the old headmaster's gaze. His lips opened, but nothing came out instantly. Even though he had been alive for a long time, the old headmaster had not learned how to say no. Headmaster, I know that you have your difficulties, and I understand you have your own considerations, but think about this. You believe that you have given a safe home for the students and entered such a dangerous place alone. But do you think the students can rest easy not knowing how their beloved headmaster is doing? If they know their current lives are in exchange for everything you have, do you think they can continue to enjoy that life? You know your students best. If you do not wish for them to wallow in guilt, please tell us everything so that we can discuss it together. Chen Ji's every word crawled into the old headmaster's heart. He did not care about his own safety, but he cared deeply about those students. Those students were the old headmaster's weakness, so of course, they were also his best helper. Without giving the old headmaster more time to consider, Chen Ge took out a ballpoint pen. He handed the pen to the old man and then got a piece of paper from In Hong's bag. I'm not lying to you. I hope you can listen to their opinion. The old headmaster held the taped pen in his grasp. The pen shuddered, and when the tip of the pen touched the paper, it started to move on its own. No matter what other people think, I am willing to help you. Chen Gu sighed under his breath when he saw the words on the paper. When the pen spirit found out Chen Gu was going to the school of the afterlife, she had sworn to commit suicide if she was brought along, but now she had changed her statement after meeting the old headmaster. The old headmaster shook his head. He held the pen gingerly like he was afraid of damaging it. He looked at it like he was looking at his granddaughter. Not only her, there's everybody else. Chen Gu flipped through the comic and summoned all the students from Muyang High School. They are all orphans, and you have given them a home. After they died, their lingering spirits remained in Muyang High School, because, for them, no matter how big the world is, Muyang High School will always be home. Seeing the familiar figures, the old headmaster was silent. About ten seconds later, he turned to Chen Gu. I am going to do something very dangerous. You shouldn't have come, and you shouldn't have brought them with you. You have seen my parents and know about them. Since you are willing to leave the students to me, it means that you understand my personality. Chen Gu stood before the old headmaster. The haunted house is my home, and the people who stay there are naturally my family. How can I let my family suffer every day with guilt? Be it the lingering spirits from Muyang High School or Bai Chiolin who was carrying the mirror, when they heard Chen Gu, they were moved. Their sense of belonging to the haunted house grew. This was not something that Chen Gu repeated daily, but it was a feeling that had slowly been impressed upon them day after day by the way Chen Gu acted around them. The thing that I'm going to do is very dangerous, it'll put you in danger, and it'll harm them. The headmaster's hair was white. He stood inside the burned classroom and looked at the familiar figures. He had not thought that he would see the children again in his life. I have spent so much time trying to get into this school. One of the reasons behind it is to help you. Chen Gu summoned the spirits back into the comic. They were just lingering spirits, thus very weak. If there was an accident, their souls would disperse, and their last trace on earth would be wiped out. 
Seeing the disappearance of his students, the headmaster had a complicated expression before he sighed in relief. You are just like your father, meddling in other people's business, prone to causing trouble, and don't like to consider the consequences. However, you have a bottom line that you will not cross and a heart of kindness that glows in the dark. This was the first time that Chen Gu had heard a comment about his father. It was completely different from his impression of his father. Afraid of stopping the old headmaster, he did not say anything to retort him. Looks like you're familiar with them, Chen Gu commented. Yes, it was your father who told me that Xu Ain is trapped inside the school of the afterlife. Without asking for anything in return, he helped me find a way to get in here. He helped me so much, and now you have personally entered the school to look for me. I owe your family too much. Chen Ji's father was built up in the headmaster's words, but Chen Gu felt a bit unsettled hearing that. It was an accident that he had taken over the haunted house, and he did not even consider that his life would be entwined with the old headmaster before this. Before, he had thought that everything was too coincidental, but now that the old headmaster mentioned it, Chen Gu suddenly realized that the headmaster appeared to have been scammed. Perhaps I am acting too selfishly, just thinking about myself and not anyone else. The old headmaster was reflecting, and Chen Gu did not know what to say. Chapter 855, Thinking into the Future? Sir, don't say that. That is all in the past, and we need to live in the present. Chen Gu coughed. He really did not expect to run into the old headmaster in the school of the afterlife. It was an accident that he had entered the school. Thankfully, he retained his habit of bringing all his employees with him no matter where he went. With numbers came power. It was hard to tell when a worker's special power would be useful. Even if they had no special power, they would be good company. Due to various coincidences, this situation was formed. It felt coincidental, but inevitable. It caused his head to go numb. One is prone to look back into the past when one is old. Seeing you reminded me of your parents. They have helped me a lot, the old headmaster said with guilt. Actually, when you first entered Muyang High School, I noticed you. It was then that I came up with the plan to enter the school to come and save Xu Ain. Don't mind all that. Chen Gu was worried that In Hong might harm the old headmaster, so he took several steps forward. Let me talk. I've been holding these things in for so long, and I wish to share them. The old headmaster shook his head. The school of the afterlife is very dangerous, and I know the chance of saving Xu Ain is not high. If I was not able to return, the students back in the class would get into trouble without anyone looking after them. I didn't feel good leaving them behind, so I left them with you. Your parents have helped me, but I've made use of you, and now to find me, you have voluntarily come to somewhere so dangerous. I don't know what to say. Sir, even though this place is dangerous, there's no need to despair. Chen Ji's eyes skipped over the headmaster to look at In Hong who was hiding behind the old man. I came here fully prepared. He flipped through the comic, and the yellowed pages ruffled in the night. Fresh blood leaked out from it. This comic that looked normal had a page that was fully red. Bang. 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 The sound of knocking echoed around them. A pale hand reached out from inside the book. There was a curl of black hair wound around her wrist. The smell of blood thickened. Fingers, arm, shoulder, finally a headless woman crawled out from the comic. That was not all. She reached into the pages to search for a long time before pulling out a woman's head. The blood red dress swung in the wind. The ghost held her head and stood next to Chinga quietly. Don't be afraid. They're all a lies. Chin Go pulled open the backpack, put the comic away, and took out a blood-red high heels from the deepest part of the bag. He placed the heels on the nearby table, and a clicking sound echoed in the room. Red footprints appeared on the ground before stopping right next to Chin Go. Suin. Chin Go called after Suin lightly. The stench of blood rushed at them. Suin, who stopped hiding himself, 
titled his head to look at the old headmaster. The whole classroom felt like it was submerged in a red sea. Not including Bai Chilin, Chin Gu was surrounded by three red specters. Are these enough? The old headmaster had no idea that Chen Gu would bring so many red specters into the school with him. His eyes were round. That's enough. As long as we're careful, we. I know it's not enough. Before the headmaster finished, Chen Gu continued. So before I entered this world, I discussed cooperating with three other red specters in this school. We had the same goal, so they have agreed to cooperate with me. In other words, there will be six, six red specters who will help us? The old headmaster was familiar with how scary red specters were. They were the representation of despair and cruelty. If he ran into one alone, other than being consumed, he could see no other ending. The six specters are chess pieces that I might use to distract the enemy. Chen Gu turned to look at his shadow, and his gaze softened. My real trump card is a greater red specter. Hearing those few words from Chen Ji's lips, the old headmaster started to doubt his hearing, but he did not dare ask him to repeat those words. This young man before him was too scary. If he did not see the three red specters with his own eyes, he would have thought that Chen Gu was kidding. He was just a half red specter, they were not on the same level. Now, what are our odds of success? Chen Gu stood before the old man. His expression was serious, not kidding at all. If what you're saying is true, we have a 90% chance of leaving the school safely. Only 90%? And that's just escaping from the school? Chen Gu frowned slightly. Counting the hibernating Zhang Ye, they only had a 90% chance of escaping. It seemed like they would still need to follow the school's consciousness if they wanted to prevail. I will share my plan with you. The old headmaster treated Chen Gu as one of his own. Your father didn't tell me why this school would appear, he only told me that the door of this school had been looking for children who were bullied and helpless. Because of that, Xu Wayne was pulled behind the door. He had studied this door closely before and noticed something special. The school inside this door was actually made up from different schools, and it was a mixture of all the bullied kids' memories. But what does that have to do with your plan? Chen Gu was confused. Of course, the link is huge. One of these places in their memory is Muyang High School. The old headmaster sighed. It was my irresponsibility. There was a sad thing that happened at Muyang High School. A student was expelled because of it. Later, his adopted father sent him back to the countryside. The child was an honest one. Even though his results were not good, he is very talented at painting. Painting? Yes, what's wrong? Nothing, go on. Chen Gu waved his hands. It is a coincidence that Muyang High School in the School of the Afterlife is like an opening, a wound that the owner of the memory was unable to heal. Where is this opening? The abandoned well behind the field. The well is directly connected to the world outside the school of the afterlife. What the old headmaster said was surprising to Chen Gu. After leaving the school, we will enter a city covered in red fog. We need to continue to head west. No matter what we see, do not turn back. No matter who calls your name, do not respond. Keep walking until you enter an abandoned mental asylum. There is a broken window in the third block of the mental asylum. After crawling through that window, we'll be safe. Third block of an abandoned mental asylum? That sounded familiar to Chen Gu. The headmaster was describing Men Nan's third sick hall. Yes, that's what your father told me. When I first came to visit Xu Wayne, it was with your father's company. We sneaked into the school through that window. Unfortunately, your parents disappeared after that, and the door was taken over by some menacing ghosts. I went back with the determination to die but realized that there was already no one there. The old headmaster sighed. Perhaps even God wishes for me to go and accompany Xu Wayne. There is no such coincidence in the world. Chen Ji's brain was spinning. After entering the blood city, Dr. Gao lost his mind in a week, 
so the old headmaster could not have passed through the blood city alone from the third sick hall to school of the afterlife and scathed. Someone or something had to be protecting him from behind. With his eyes red, an answer floated up in Chin Ji's heart. He gritted his teeth to stop himself from voicing it out loud. It was Chin Ji's father who had passed on all the information about the school to the old headmaster, and it was Chin Ji's father who had broken the window in the third sick hall. Why would he waste so much energy to send the old headmaster to the school of the afterlife? Chin Guk clenched his fists, and his eyes accidentally scanned the red sun outside the window. The consciousness made from despair was boiling. These children sought no escape, they were crying in pain, but no one could hear their voice, no one would understand them, and no one was willing to accompany them. His eyes narrowed as a possibility suddenly came to Chen Go. Did he want to have the headmaster from Muyang High School come and take over as the headmaster for School of the Afterlife? His heart was thumping. Chen Go held the edge of the table and took a deep breath before he could calm down. Chapter 856 I have another solution, the owner of the door at Third Sick Hall is Men Nan. There are not many with the surname Men Wen. Perhaps the child's name is a hint left for me. Door represented the unknown, but it also represented the exit. Now that I think about it, there have been plenty of clues. What kind of trouble have my parents gotten themselves into? Why is it that I must use this method to approach the truth? Certain questions needed more probing. After the conversation with the old headmaster, Chinga knew that his parents were hiding many things, they were not as simple as they appeared. Problems that even Dr. Gao could not solve, Chin Ji's parents could resolve easily, but even so, they did not dare to tell Chinga the truth. They only kept releasing hints and clues for him. This reaction caused unease in Chen Gu. I have no idea what I need to be careful of, but now I can be certain my family has encountered something incredibly troublesome. Chen Gu stood next to the table. His brain was spinning. Every word mentioned by the old headmaster was important to him. Chen Gu, are you all right? Seeing how frozen Chen Gu was, he wanted to go over to the young man, but was afraid of the red specters surrounding him. I'm fine. Chen Gu waved his hands. The path you mentioned is too dangerous. I am not confident about leaving this place. The Red City is filled with all sorts of monster. The happenstance of Dr. Gao had greatly impacted Chen Gu. A perfectly fine person became insane in a week, that was too much of an ordeal. I cannot risk my workers' lives. Chen Gu sat at the table. Perhaps due to the overthinking, his face was pale. But that is the only exit. The headmaster did not expect Chen Gu to reject his idea. I actually know there's another exit. Chen Gu slowly raised his head to look at the old headmaster. Every scenario has a door. We can leave from the school of the afterlife's door. That's impossible. The school will not allow any students to leave. It has provided the children a home, and the children have become a part to the scenario, there is not one without the other. The headmaster pointed out the window. Do you see the red eye out there? All the students' negative emotions are gathered there. Once it realizes someone is trying to escape, they will be stopped by the school. It will not allow any students to leave, much less open the door for Xu Wayne to exit. You don't know this door well enough. Based on my knowledge, a girl managed to leave this school from that door a long time ago. Her name is Chang Wenyu. Chen Gu was knowledgeable about the school's limitations. Are you sure? How did she manage that? The headmaster was shocked. This was the first time that he had heard something like that. Currently, this school is controlled by the consciousness of the collective student body. The despairing students will not let us leave, but if one of us replaces the school's consciousness to become the new owner of the school, we will be able to control the whole school and open the door. When Chen Gu spoke, his eyes were kept on the old headmaster, marking every single change to his expression. We? The headmaster looked at Chen Gu like he was mad. That's impossible. Over the past few years, the school's consciousness has kept growing, it has become a monster. 
even a red specter is no match for it. The old headmaster added to stress as if worried that he had not gotten his point across, even if there are six red specters. He wanted Chen Gu to abandon that dangerous thought in his mind. From his perspective, trying to replace the school's consciousness was a dead end. Aren't you curious why I'd rather challenge the school than venture into the blood red city? Chen Ji's father's shadow appeared in Chen Ji's mind, but the image that he had of his father was completely different from the man whom the old headmaster had described. He had trouble seeing things from his father's perspective. Honestly, he had no idea what his family was thinking, he merely believed that they would not harm him. Why? The old headmaster was confused. He had come from that way. In his mind, that was a perfectly safe path. You have greatly underestimated the danger level of the city. Chen Gu told the headmaster about Dr. Gao, not hiding anything. I have many witnesses with me, like Suin, Bai Chilin, and your student, the Pen Spirit. The past has stuck to us like a nightmare. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can still see myself back there. To prove that he was not exaggerating, Chen Gu summoned the Pen Spirit. She had been there when Dr. Gao showed up in Liwan City. She had experienced everything that Chen Gu had. The Pen Spirit had a unique talent when it came to describing something. She drew on the paper, and the content was enough to scar the old headmaster for life. The city is so dangerous? The old headmaster was shocked. Yes, I was surprised when I heard you managed to get here through the city. But perhaps it's because you have done a lot of good things in your life, and a power has been guiding you in the dark. Chen Gu put it in a subtle way. I was just lucky. Luck is part of one's power. I plan to treat the abandoned well behind the field as our backup. If my plan fails, we will leave that way. With insurance like this, this should be the safest way. Chen Gu was not prepared to enter the Red City, the place was filled with too many unknowns. He did not take much time to convince the old headmaster, and the latter soon promised to follow Chen Gu. Sir, now that we're a team, we have to clear up all the inconsistencies within us to prevent future misunderstanding. Chen Gu pulled over Yin Bai, who was hiding among the people. You are looking for Li Xuein, but why are there two Li Xueins in this school? Which of them is real? Which one is fake? Yin Bai did not expect herself to be named. She was happy when she saw the old headmaster, but when her eyes landed on Yin Hong, behind the headmaster, her heart became congested like the thing most precious to her had been stolen. When Yin Hong saw Yin Bai, her expression became nervous. She gripped the old man's shirt from behind and did not dare breathe a world. To prevent an accident, Chen Gu summoned all the red specters. This was to stun Yin Hong into submission. He did not wish to get into an altercation with the old headmaster for something small, so he used his landslide advantage to bulldoze the possible conflict from forming. Chapter 857 Another Clue? Yin Hong hid behind the old headmaster, unwilling to come out. She looked very nervous, but Chen Gu did not see too much fear on her face. In other words, even when facing three red specters, Yin Hong was confident that she could run away. Chen Gu had no idea where her confidence came from, so he could only approach this carefully. Sir? Seeing the silence from the old headmaster, it appeared like he had something to hide. Both of these children are Li Xuein, they are one and the same. The way the headmaster regarded the two girls was filled with love and guilt. I know one of them is Yin Bai and the other Yin Hong, but no matter what they're called, they are my family. He reached out to touch Yin Hong's head as he guarded the girl behind him. Being touched by the old headmaster, a trace of disgust crossed Yin Hong's eyes, but perhaps she knew that the situation put her in too much of a disadvantage and she knew that she needed the old headmaster's support, so she did not resist and put forth an obedient persona. Actually, if we're splitting hairs, Yin Hong is more like Xu Ain. Facing the drunk father and a mother who was too weak to leave the wheelchair, she only had herself to rely on. The old headmaster put the blame on himself. This is all my fault. It was me who had the blind trust in Xu Ain's father 
and it was me who pushed them into the fire pit. What the old headmaster said sounded new to Ian Bai, she looked at the old headmaster blankly. Her beautiful and clear eyes were filled with confusion, and her lips kept mumbling the word, Grandpa. Ian Hong's reaction was completely different from Ian Bai's. She was trying her best to suppress the anger in her heart. There was no visible change to her expression, but a flash of red had already appeared in her eyes. The past memory hurt her, and her body was slowly changing. Sir, I'm afraid things are not as simple as you think. Chen Gu did not want to hide anything from the old headmaster. He opened Yin Hong's bag and took out the crumpled papers that he had found in Yin Hong's drawer. Seeing those crumpled papers, the calm on Yin Hong's face was shattered. She looked like a murderer whose victim had just been found. The papers were filled with Yin Hong's dissatisfaction with the world and the desire to kill the old headmaster. Holding the papers in his hand, Chen Gu looked at the old headmaster, who would give everything to shelter Yin Hong, and Yin Hong who was holding on to the old headmaster with tears in her eyes. He started to hesitate. Shaking his head slightly, Chen Gu placed the papers back into the bag. Sir, can you tell me in detail what really happened to Xu Ain? After putting the papers filled with maddened claims away, Chen Gu noticed both Yin Hong and the old headmaster sigh in relief. It was then that Chen Gu realized that perhaps the old headmaster already knew everything. Yin Bai is the purest side within Xu Wayne's heart. She is pure, kind, and innocent, but the only reason she is able to survive like that is because all the anxiety, fear, and hatred has been taken away by Yin Hong. There was regret and pain in the headmaster's voice. Xu Wayne's mother is the first child I adopted. Due to her physical limitation, she was unable to be pregnant, so she adopted Xu Wayne. At the time, it was me who accompanied them during the adoption. Xu Wayne was still so young. Seeing how happy the family of three was, I was glad. But later, I found out that things were not what they seemed. Chen Gu heard an undercurrent of hatred from the old headmaster's story. It surprised him that such a kind person would feel hatred towards someone. You can't judge a book by its cover. Xu Wayne's father was a liar. He approached Xu Wayne's mother not because he liked her but because he was after the few estates under my name. He knew that I have no biological children, so he purposely came into our lives. Even adopting Xu Wayne was just a performance that he did for us. If that was everything, the old headmaster might not have been that mad, but what he said next was the real reason behind his anger. After he found out that I planned to donate all my estates and have already put that in my will with the lawyer's help, he turned into a different person. Every day, he came up with a new reason to find trouble and even beat Xu Wayne's mother. One time, he tried to turn his anger on Xu Wayne. Thankfully, she was discovered and rescued by her mother. The old man's voice was shaking. He was a kind person, but that did not mean that he would not get angry. From another perspective, with the old headmaster's personality, he probably would not consume another ghost, but he was still a half-red specter. That could only mean that he had a very deep reason to stay behind, and there was something that he needed to complete. I found out all this from Xu Wayne's diary after she passed away. Do you know how much my heart hurt when I was reading that diary? The headmaster gently guarded Yin Hong behind him. Yin Bai would have been unable to survive in that kind of place, so that is why Yin Hong appeared. After hearing the explanation from the headmaster, Chen Gu was glad that he did not show the papers immediately. He studied Yin Hong and was suddenly reminded of something. Yin Bai had said that her father suddenly left home one day and then did not return. Chen Gu did not think much of it then, but now that he was looking at Yin Hong, he had a feeling that he knew what had happened to the man. He would not return, he would never return. Yin Hong harbored resentment toward the old headmaster, she even wanted to harm him. But she did not expect what happened next. When facing three red specters, the headmaster guarded her and became her savior. This changed her perspective of the old headmaster. Then she saw how regretful the headmaster was. An unsettling feeling rose in her heart, and her cold, hard heart started to crack slightly. 
I didn't expect that she would have such a past. I can understand it, but... Chen Gu did not finish what he began. He put the headless woman and red high heels away. Those two could not be considered workers yet. The headless woman was there unwillingly, and the red high heels was there because of a contract. Even though the heels were placed inside the backpack, more bloody footprints appeared on the table. Chen Gu was making a stance by putting the two red specters away. Chen Gu decided to hand this over to the old headmaster himself. Even though Yin Hong was a vessel of negative emotions, she was Yin Bai's essential other half. With his hands on Yin Bai's shoulders, Chen Ji's eyes moved between Yin Bai and Yin Hong. He was about to ask the old headmaster some questions when something suddenly hit him. How come this feels so familiar? Yin Hong and Yin Bai are just like me and my shadow in Liwan City. To be precise, Chen Gu was reminded of himself and the ghost fetus. One was a happy-go-lucky, haunted house owner, while the other carried an entire four-star scenario on his back. Wait a minute. Chen Gu rubbed his temples. It was my parents who told the old headmaster that Li Xuein was in the school of the afterlife. This means that they know about Xuein's condition. Could this be another clue left by them? Chapter 858, Why Did I Appear? Chen Gu stood in the classroom unmovable like a statue. The old headmaster's appearance left a deep impression on him. A hidden clue had been discovered, and his world was slowly being turned around, which introduced change to his way of thinking. Muyang High School and the Third Sick Hall are among the earliest scenarios I experienced. It has already been so long, and I didn't expect I'll run into things connected to them at a four-star scenario. No one went to disturb Chen Gu, they stood like guards around him. Muyang High School was the first two-star scenario that Chen Gu had experienced, and the third sick hall was the first three-star scenario. Now, the School of the Afterlife was his first four-star scenario. These three scenarios were linked in curious ways, and this surprised Chen Gu. He suspected that none of the missions given by the Black Phone were random, and each of them served a specific purpose. All the missions given by the phone have the word trial before them. Could such a difficult mission just be a trial mission? One-star scenarios deal with people, two-star scenarios deal with specters, three-star scenarios deal with red specters, and four-star scenarios deal with greater red specters. Logically speaking, the difference in star level means a difference in difficulty, but actually they are also interconnected. This feels like someone is behind this. They want me to experience certain things through these scenarios to achieve a certain goal. Chen Ji's brows were creased deeply. It was rare for him to have this kind of expression. Why would someone do something like that? What is there for me to know, or what exactly have I lost? Lowering his head to look at Yin Hong and Yin Bai, the two girls looked away in fear. Could it be that I have lost a version of myself, too? Chen Gu did not know what kind of expression he should show. His brain was a mess, and for some reason, he was reminded of his haunted house and the door inside it. When he found out about the blood door in his haunted house, for the first time, he had been really scared. The most unsettling thing was, when the door was opened at midnight, he could hear someone calling his name from inside. He had a fresh memory of that voice. It was very familiar, but he could not pinpoint it. It sounded like himself. My voice calling my own name? Thinking back to this strange experience, Chin Gu felt a chill run up his spine. Perhaps I have lost my real self. Chin Gu had many secrets that he could not share with others. He had to shoulder them himself. He would not be afraid, he would hold everything in. When Dr. Gao entered the door in my haunted house, he was almost scared to death, and he hurriedly escaped. With Ghost Story Society's power at the time, only a four-star scenario would warrant a reaction like that. The door was in the haunted house's toilet, so in other words, the world behind the door was a reflection of Chen Ji's haunted house. I wonder what the haunted house behind the door looks like. Chen Gu was curious, but with his current power, if he went in, he would probably not come out. Since the person behind the door is calling my name, 
won't I walk into their trap if I enter the door voluntarily? Before I understand everything, I have to control myself. Chen Good decided to add another door to the toilet cubicle after he returned to the haunted house. Perhaps he might add a cement wall as well, pinning it down with wooden planks now felt too weak. The door only opens at midnight. If I can deal with this problem, my haunted house can open at night. That will increase the operating hours and increase income. Shaking his head, Chen Gu stopped himself from thinking too far ahead. He put down his bag and squatted down between In Hong and In Bai. Regardless of whether or not they were a hint left behind by his family, he had some questions for them. I will not harm you, I merely see my past self in you. So, I need to understand one thing. When did this happen to you? Or should I say, when did In Hong show up? Chen Gu was getting closer to the truth step by step. It was like he was walking through the fog. Any source of light was something that he needed to hold on to. I don't know. In Bai was helpless. Her hands were gripped together. Of everyone there, she was closest to the old headmaster, but the headmaster was shielding another girl, and the girl looked so much like her. Chen Gu did not force In Bai, instead turning to In Hong. Scrutinized by him, In Hong was first afraid and nervous, reacting the same way In Bai did. But when she realized that this would not work and could not earn her sympathy from Chen Gu, her real self surfaced. The red eyes stared at her own bag on the ground. In Hong kept her head lowered so others could not see her expression. If I tell you the answer, will you return my bag? In Hong's school bag looked normal, it was very feminine and youth-like. Who would have thought it would be filled with papers reciting curses and murders? Okay. Chen Gu gave his promise. It was nighttime when I first opened my eyes, around 2 a.m. I heard movement from inside the bedroom, and when I turned to look, I saw my adopted father inside my room. In Hong's voice was eerily calm like she was telling another person's story. I was spooked, and a scream escaped. My adopted father opened the door and ran. After some pause, she said, I surfaced on that day. I only appeared after Ian Bai fell asleep. I know everything that she's experienced, but she never remembers me. I do not blame her because I understand her best in this world. I know the kind of hell she lives in, the fears that she must face. I don't know why I appeared. Perhaps Ian Bai was too scared, too cowardly, but couldn't seek help, so she created me. Ian Hong glanced at Ian Bai. Of course, it could be that I am a ghost who happened to come across her. A cruel smile lit up her lips. In Hong reached out wanting to touch In Bai's face, but the latter shied away. In the morning, I was the innocent, cute angel, but I can't even describe what I am at night. I tried to find meaning to my existence, and I eventually found it. In Hong pulled back her long sleeves. There were signs of burn on them. The old dog liked to come into my bedroom at night. I prepared a glass of hot water by my bedside. That was the first time I resisted, but because I was too weak, the result wasn't perfect. Still, it did give him quite a scare. In Hong's term of reference to her adopted father kept changing. The girl had started to slowly shed her disguise. Chapter 859, What Have I Seen? From a normal person's perspective, I might be crazy, or at least, that was what the old dog kept saying. He even said that he would kill me. In Hong scoffed with condescension. She did not continue like, if she did, it might pull up yet another secret. I think I get it. The reason for your appearance is because Ian Bai suffered constant fear, but she had no one to rely on, so a persona that is completely different from her own surfaced within her. Chen Gu tried looking for similarities between In Hong and In Bai and himself, but he tried for a long time and still failed to find anything. From a young age, he had been cared for, and he did not have to worry about anything. Other than his parents' unique parenting style, his childhood had not been that different from that of any other child. My childhood was very normal. There is no instance of torture. Chen Gu turned to In Hong. So, now the two of you have split? 
Is it possible that you two can recombine? I don't know. I haven't tried it myself. But that should be impossible. She has been avoiding me, so she probably doesn't wish to be stuck with me. In Hong's eyes landed on the old headmaster, with a trace of envy in them. It was me who helped her at her lowest point, but look how scared she is of me. In fact, she is still so close to an outsider. In Hong was very dissatisfied with the old headmaster. Her heart was swirling with negative emotions. The way she saw it, the reason Yin Bai experienced those things, was partly due to the old headmaster. She hated everything and wanted to destroy everything, but she was unlimitedly kind toward Yin Bai. However, the kindness had a condition to it. Perhaps one day, when Yin Hong lost herself in the spiral, she would do something irreparable to Yin Bai, to completely take over her body. You suddenly woke up one night, without any warning. Chen Gu was considering another scenario. Could it be because you were traumatized and the trauma was beyond what you could handle? Chen Gu felt like this explanation suited his situation better. They said that a child could see things that normal people could not. Even though the memory back then was already blurry, he suspected that he had seen something beyond his psychological threshold, and an accident had occurred, causing him to split from the ghost fetus. Before the previous question was answered, another new problem surfaced. What kind of thing can be so scary that a mental breakdown happened from one glance? Are you done with your questioning? Can you give my bag back now? In Hong's tone and expression shifted greatly from before, if he did not see it in person, Chen Gu would have had a hard time imagining how these two people who had the same face could have such wildly different personalities. Okay. Chen Gu passed school bag back to In Hong. We've stayed here for too long. The school is no longer safe, we need to move. After getting all the information that he needed, Chen Gu led the old headmaster and the girls out of the classroom. Turning back to look at Mu Yang High School behind him, a strange feeling arose in his heart. Everything looked like it was a coincidence, but there might be a hand controlling everything behind it. This is not a good feeling, but there is something about me that cannot be controlled. Chen Gu moved his gaze to his shadow. An unexpected change had happened to him, and that was Zhang Ye. In Liwan City, Chen Gu had found out from Xiaobu that his parents had wanted Xiaobu to become his shadow. They had even made a contract with Xiaobu, but even they could not have expected that Chen Gu would have Zhang Ye move into his shadow at the rooftop of a highest building at Liwan City. The future is constantly changing, no one can control everything. What I've lost will return eventually. The School of the Afterlife, Mu Yang High School, and the Third Sick Hall are related, but no matter how many secrets or unknown things are hidden here, there is one thing that shall never change. It was Zhang Ye who consumed the original door pusher for the School of the Afterlife, so she is the most qualified to become the new door pusher. When Chen Gu was thinking, he would radiate this special quality without even realizing it. The employees had gotten used to it. But this was the first time for the old headmaster and Yin Hong, and they reacted to it differently. There was surprise in the old headmaster's eyes, but at the same time, it felt like he saw something familiar. Yin Hong had a complicated expression, it felt like she had given up some dangerous thoughts. Sir, we shall go and check out the well behind the field first, to ensure that the path is safe. Chen Gu would be worried if he did not see it for himself. Okay. The old headmaster held In Hong's hand and walked ahead. They reached the end of the corridor, and the road ahead was blocked by wooden planks. There was no way forward. In a bit, some monsters might be led in here. You'd better be prepared and move fast, or else the school might realize it and send over staff and teachers. The old headmaster half squatted on the ground and very easily removed the few planks closest to the wall. As the planks loosened, a large amount of blood fog leaked in from the gap. Quick. To save time, Chin Gu did not take everyone through. He only brought Su Yin. Pulling back the pl planks, the old headmaster, Chin Gu, and Su Yin crawled through the gap. After they left, the headmaster swiftly replaced the planks. 
I need to nail them back so that it will not be discovered by the school. The headmaster held the planks and looked for the nails that just fell. The nails aren't normal nails. They can harm the things outside the school, and they come with curses. Are the nails like these? Chen Gu sought out some nails from his pocket. When he first entered the school, he had been cursed. His body had been poked with nails at irregular intervals, so he had many such nails. Yes. The way that the headmaster looked at Chen Gu was strange. Where did you get so many of them? It's a long story. Chen Gu did not want to waste time on this subject. He opened his backpack. Do you need a hammer? After dealing with the planks, Chen Gu took his time looking around. Blood fog drifted around them, and there was a stench in the air. The visibility was very poor. I wonder if it's on purpose that the school's consciousness arranged for Muyang High School to be on the most outer layer. The old headmaster led Chen Gu through the blood fog. Actually, we are still inside the school. If we walk further, you'll come across a red wall, and the wall sequesters the school from the outside world. Does that mean that we will be able to leave this school by jumping over the wall? Then why are we wasting time looking for a well? Chen Gu did not get it. When you get close to the wall, you'll be discovered by the school. Endless souls of despairing children will rush at you and tear you into pieces. The headmaster shivered. If you wish to leave the school quietly, the well is the only path. Chapter 860 Red and Human Heart Through the Veil of the Blood Fog Chen Gu could only make out the shape of a field, but the scene before his eyes slowly overlapped with his memory of Muyang High School. The well is over there. The old headmaster cared for Chen Gu. He was worried that an accident might happen to Chen Gu, so he guarded Chen Gu behind him and walked ahead. Walking through the field, with the headmaster leading the way, Chen Gu finally found the well. Once he got near, he could hear the many crying sounds coming from inside the well. There were male, female, and children's, it sounded scary. Is the exit at the bottom? With the thick fog, even with Yin Yang vision, Chen Gu could not tell what was at the bottom. Yes. Is this how you entered the school of the afterlife? Chen Gu stood at the edge of the well. Su Yin reached out to stop him, the well made him uneasy. Yes, the blood fog at the bottom is very thick. It is basically palpable. That is probably how the well escaped the school's detection. The headmaster signaled for Chen Gu not to stay by the well for too long to prevent attracting the school's attention. There is only one way forward when you reach the bottom of the well. Follow that path, and after a 3 to 15 minute walk, you can leave the school of the afterlife and enter the blood red city. There, we will need to find a way to go back to the surface. The whole process sounded easy, but there were too many uncertainties. Chen Gu held the rim of the well and turned back to look at the headmaster. After entering the well, you need to walk for 3 to 15 minutes? Why the time difference? If the journey is the same, even if you slow down a lot, the time should not be so different. I have no answer to that. Every time the path is the same, but sometimes, it takes longer to travel through it, and sometimes it's shorter. Do you want to go down to take a look? The old headmaster did not get it himself. If this was someone else giving the suggestion, not only would Chen Gu not go down, he would suspect that it was a trap. He would toss the person down first. But the old headmaster was different, he trusted this old man implicitly. With this backup plan, I will have nothing to lose. I can go on to do things that I might be afraid of, but the condition is that this is not a dead end. Chen Gu thought for a long time and asked for Su Yin's opinion. After getting Su Yin's approval, he decided to go down the well with the old headmaster. I used this path alone, and there was no one to help me. This time, there's so many of us, and with the accompaniment of a red specter, there won't be any problems. To help Chen Gu calm down, the old headmaster was the first to walk into the well. Just as he was going to jump, Chen Gu stopped him. Wait a minute. Chen Gu took out some rope from Lin Cici's bag. This was the leftover from when he jumped over the wall between the western and eastern campus. 
Tie this to your waist so that we won't get separated. Why do you have everything? The old headmaster was no longer that surprised. How deep is this well? Will two ropes be enough? Should be. The headmaster held the rim of the well with both hands. His old jacket slowly bloomed with black-red flowers, and his eyes were slowly consumed by redness. Seeing the change in the old headmaster, Chinga only noticed how different this half-red specter was to the other specters that he had encountered. The old headmaster gave him a strange feeling that was hard to describe. Standing next to the headmaster, he would not treat him like a ghost, but a living person. Even a red specter hasn't given me this kind of feeling before. Is it because the old headmaster has done so much charitable work in his life that even though he turned into a ghost, he doesn't have the ghost's cruel nature? Seeing the old headmaster slowly disappearing into the well, Chinga rushed over. He had Suin walk at the back, and he took the middle spot. Once he entered the old well, the smell of blood hit him like a wall. The blood fog inside the well was much thicker than outside. It was unclear why, but the well appeared to be a natural spot for negative emotions to gather, and thus, a thick layer of blood fog was found there. Entering it was like falling into a pool of blood. His clothes stuck to his body, and Chinga felt prickling pain coming from his skin like someone was biting him. However, when he looked with his inyang vision, he could not see anything. Suin did not give a warning, so it should be safe. Everything is still within control. Their surroundings were completely enveloped by blood fog. Nothing could be seen clearly. If not for Suin, Chingu would not have gone down there no matter what. We haven't reached the bottom? The well was deeper than he thought. No wonder the school could not detect this loophole. The lower they went, the greater the pressure. Chengu was worried that something might happen to the old headmaster. He was afraid that when he reached the bottom, it would not be the old headmaster at the other end of the rope. The rope stopped being pulled taut, and the old headmaster's figure clarified. They had not reached the bottom of the well, but the headmaster had stopped. Why aren't we moving anymore? Chengu was confused, he noticed something wrong about the old man. We can't go on. The headmaster's voice was shaking. Chingu moved his body to get close to the headmaster. He followed the man's gaze, and cold sweat slid down his face. It was no longer a red fog under the headmaster's feet, but a red pool of water, and human faces could be seen poking out from the water. As the blood fog gathered, the water level inside the well was rising at a visible rate. The monsters hidden in the water had their mouths gaping like they could not wait to sink their teeth into Chingu. When I came last time, there aren't these monsters. The old headmaster was desperate. It's fine. The reason Chingu said that was because Su Yin showed no reaction. I saw them in the school in the mirror. Created by the painter. They have no skin, and they're covered in blood and guts, surrounded by a horrible stench. These monsters were hardly any different from those that Chingu had seen. The only difference was that they were not walking upside down. How did these monsters appear? Did they come from the blood city outside the school, or is this well their place of birth? If the monsters come from the city, why would I encounter them in the painter's school? And are they all upside down, or has the painter been rearing them? Is it because of him that strange things have been happening to the school? Chinga felt like he was getting closer to the center of the secret. He yanked on the rope lightly. Sir, let's go back for now. I feel like I've seen them somewhere before. The old headmaster stared at the monster inside the well. They're harvesting the blood fog. They survive on humans' negative emotions. I've heard about them before. But, this is strange. Why would they show up here? And why are there so many negative emotions gathered here? They survive on humans' negative emotions? Appear inside the well? Something occurred to Chen Gu. He was reminded of the hint given by the black phone regarding Mu Yang High School. Everyone has a deep well inside their heart where shameful and unknowable secrets stay buried. 